Right. So it's a sacrifice to where, nah, <laughs> I don't have to agree with the order, but I'm going to submit to it. Right. 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 And it doesn't take any away from that masculine entity of energy because it takes more energy to submit than it does rebel. Oh, yeah, for sure. You understand me? It's Especially for do. a powerful person. Right. Because a person may tell you the right order, but you got a disagreement. Yeah. But it ain't about you because there's a general, then there's the soldier. There's rules. So it's like right now we got a lot of people who want to be warriors when they should be soldiers, which will put them in line and position and then allow the whole organization to move forward and grow. But we deal with a warrior, which can be more emotional. Mm -hmm. A soldier, devoid your emotion, right. cut off all your personality at right. this moment and just right. follow the goddamn order so we can win the war. High level conversation. Tap in with the guy. Peace family, I'm 19 Keys tapping in. This is 19 Keys High Level Conversations. When we talk about high level conversations, that means I'm bringing in a high level observer so that we can have a cipher. Today, I wanna to talk about high level masculinity and what it means to be a warrior. You understand me? And we can dive into all areas and we'll go into many different fields wherever the conversation takes us. But I wanted us to really establish a baseline on what it means to be masculine. Everybody talk about you know, high level manhood or being a high level man. But we want to get to the principles and the, and the character aspect of it. And that goes in towards masculinity first. Because for me, you can't be a high level man if you ain't masculine. Come on now. So I brought somebody that I believe has high level masculinity. He's a warrior, a trainer, a boxer, a soldier. He has been through many different fields and various degrees of challenging himself throughout life. You understand me? And he's a, also a scholarly brother that has a mathematical mind such as myself. You understand me? And he understands high degrees of knowledge. So I know for a fact that Mike Rashid was a perfect person to bring on to talk to us all about high level masculinity. I hope y'all enjoy this. What's up, Ken? What's going on with the God, man? Peace God. Peace God. Thank you for having me on, bro. Yes, sir, man. Yes, sir, it's an honor. Man, it's an honor to be on, man. We always had great conversations Indeed. when I do your podcast. Indeed. So. I decided that, uh, yeah, let's tap in. Come yeah, on, man. Bro. It's funny, man, when you bring up the, what is it, the high, high level male. Being a high value man. High value man. Yeah. I really hate that term. I do too. I think it's, uh, it's interesting that there's people that run with that, right? Because they're trying to project to the world who they want them to see mm -hmm. them as, you know? And I think that's just, that's totally wrong. Um, Lao Tzu, one of my favorite authors, he said, it's funny because Lao Tzu was a, he was like a janitor, a custodian, yeah. in like some Ming dynasty in the castle, but he wrote and he was very intelligent. And he said, one of his uh, passages in Tao Te Ching, he said, he who defines himself doesn't really know who he is. Mm. And I'm like, say less, you know mm. what I'm saying? And I read that a long time ago, so he that always stuck He who defines stuck himself doesn't really know who he really is. Right, because think about it. Um, I've been doing a string of interviews all of January, and they will always say, well, who is Mike Rashid? Right. I'm like, you tell me, because it don't matter what I say to you. What matters is the impression that I leave on you when I'm finished talking to you. So, you know, I can say anything, right? I may be a very nice person to you, very mean person to that person, you know what I'm saying? So who I am is up to, you know, it's up, I, I would like for you to have mm -hmm. a pleasant experience with me, right? So it's in my best interest to be nice to you and everyone I deal with, but you know, I don't know how you're gonna take me. So, right. you know, so, you know, I think people should know who they are to be deeply rooted in something, some kind of foundation, which I have that, but I'm, I never run around telling people who I am, like right. what kind of person I am. I would prefer for, you know, I'll ask specific questions, but I prefer for my actions to, to do the talking. Now that, that makes sense in a sense, the way it got me to thinking is, is it may, it's probably better to consistently redefine yourself than to define Indeed. yourself. Right. You understand yeah. me? Yeah. Because once you get, my bro, uh, Hassan, man, Hassan gave me some jewels. He uh, currently paraplegic. Well, he's starting to learn how to walk more now, mm -hmm. right? He was one of the uh, person that I seen, man. He had a lot of vivacious energy. You see him, he the type of person, man. When they talk about pushing P, man, he was the example right. of that, man. Right, From right, Oakland, right. California, is the type of person that, 
you know, energy is always on a thousand. Yeah. You feel me? Always surrounded people like by that. people, yeah. live energy. Yeah. He type person that walk up and talk to somebody, woman while they with him, and they still give him the time of day. <laughs> right, he had right. a, he had a, everybody can't do it, right. but he was that type yeah. of person. Yeah. But one day he took a trip out to California, jumped off a cliff in a diving accident, man, and he uh, broke his spine. Okay. You understand me? And uh, since then he's been relearning how to right. walk again. Uh, but it never broke his spirit. He went right. into a very deep spiritual mode and started doing a lot of shadow work with himself. And I remember one day I was talking to him in Lake Mary by Oakland. I had just opened up a store. Mm. And I was telling him about how good the store was doing at the time. You right. understand me? And he had stopped me. He was like, bro, you understand me? That store ain't you. That's just an illusion. Mm. He said, you way more than that shit. Mm. You gonna do way more than that. You mm. understand me? That store ain't shit. And I didn't take it in a bad manner, you understand me? Because I knew what I was doing subconsciously at the same time. I was filtering who I was through a level of accomplishment for other people to see me in. Right. And because at the time, man, it was a struggle, right? I, I, I didn't have no money for real. I'm struggling to pay rent while struggling to have this business, while juggling right. it. So I wanted people to see the one metric of value and wanted them to see me through that as mm -hmm. a filter. Yeah. So I was giving them an award, the world an illusion for them to carry on, mm -hmm. but I'm at the same time measuring myself by the value of how people appreciate this right. illusion. Right. So when I broke that, it was like, damn, you're 100% right. I'm way bigger than this. This ain't nothing. In my mind, I went through re-envisioning myself. Like, who am I really, though? Right. You understand me? I'm more than what I'm showing myself at the moment and what I'm accomplishing and mm -hmm. what I'm feeling right now. Mm -hmm. And from that day on point, I made sure that I never believed the illusions, even the ones I show the world, mm -hmm. because they can only see aspects of myself. Right. I'm the only one that can experience who right. I really am. Right. And that's a day-to-day -day experience that I have to go through in consistent development. Right. So like redefining yourself is important because sometimes you get to a point where I call it the content versus being content, content model, being where content. you created content in your yeah, life. You produce who you are now. You are the current content in your life, mm -hmm. but you got to be a content creator. You got to consistently create and produce. Otherwise, you become a salesman of who you are, but you're no longer producing any more value. That is that part. Yeah. That's, so that's what I'm talking about. The people that run with this high value male, they try to define themselves, right? Yeah. And and I looked at it, and even with their definition, they still don't fit that, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because it's interesting, a part of their little doctrine, part of that is being important to other people, mm. to your community, mm -hmm. right? And I'm like, are you? You know what I'm right. saying? Right. So anyway, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I try not to focus on the negatives, ne negative aspects on people because I feel like unless you're a devil, maybe if I'm around you or whatever, I can nudge you back into a cool space you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. i try not to push people deeper into a dark space and uh even like people that have been like temporary enemies of mine like you know i've been one of those people um robert green and 48 laws of power one of the chapters is crush your enemies totally right mm -hmm. and that used to be so me but as i i've gotten older and have developed more empathy and been able being able to look at situations from that person's perspective like okay this person it is deficient they're weak and they want what i got that's unfortunate for him mm -hmm. i kind of feel bad for you now you know what i'm saying because you're not that really a threat so it made me look at things different and try to nudge people it's, it's interesting bro i've sat with people who are mm -hmm. enemies and we ended hugging it out yeah. you know what i'm saying because they seen a person that kind of gave a fuck you know yeah. what i'm saying Cause that's just how I am. So, but conflict. So let's let's start there. Cause I wanna, mm -hmm. and we can put this on the screen. Anytime we talk about something masculine, that's y'all can start counting this up. Conflict resolution number one. Yes, yes. Right. Like the the ability to be able to solve your problems. You mm -hmm. understand me? And a peaceful resolution. Right. Right. Is a masculine trait. Correct. Right. I agree. That's effectively utilizing that masculine energy and intellect in the right capacity. Right. So it's like we deal with a society that doesn't have conflict resolution. Right. Right. And that's evident in our crime rates. It's evident in the emotions that we carry out on a mm -hmm. daily basis. Mm -hmm. Right. So what got you to start developing better conflict resolution? My father. Okay. You know, first and foremost, like me being pushed into boxing at such a young age, that's literally like that's that's four dimensional chess in mm. a physical form, mm. but the mental is controlling it all, right? So that was a area of conflict resolution in itself, 
Okay, boom. It made me respect all men because yeah. it's a lot of guys that don't like they could fight that could scrap. Mm. So I had to, you know, you move different. Um, my father, I learned a great deal from him. Um, we were talking earlier and I was saying that if I got in trouble at school, he'd be like, you know, this is a little psychological tactics, but he'd be like, if, if something happened in school, tell me. Like, don't let them tell me, and you, you sitting around me, you ain't told me. Yeah. It's gonna be worse. So, yeah. cushion your punishment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it, it really taught me how to own my shit. You know what mm. I'm saying? And in my family, in my household, we, we spoke about everything. There's no going to bed with, with conflict on your heart with, within the house. Yeah. And that's just who I've become all my life. So, people, sometimes people have seen me as a very conf confrontational person, and I am, but not in that negative sense. Like, like what's up, nigga? That's not me. But if there's an outstanding issue, I have to deal with it. Right. Especially somebody that I have to see, I have to deal with, right? I have to deal with it. You know right. what I'm saying? Um, let's, let's fix this. Right. There's been many a times that I've approached people like, look, man, because, you know, people will do passive aggressive shit and, but won't say nothing to you. Mm -hmm. So I had to come to people like, look, bro, I ain't got no problem with you. If I did something or said something, I apologize, but it wasn't intentional. Yeah. But I want to know what, what's there. Like, is, is something going on? I've had that conversation so many times. I've also, on the flip side, had the uncomfortable conversations with people before, like when I was in the streets, where it was like, look, and these are guys that were like, I'm supposed to be afraid of, you know what I'm saying? And two in particular I could think of, you know, we run into each other, it's a little fake this, I'm like, hey bro, um, so-and-so said that you had, you felt a certain way about X, Y, Z. I know it's a lot of people in here, but we'll, we have to see each other man to man at some point so we could talk about it mm -hmm. or or let it get weird and deal with it like that you know what i'm saying so and bro when you talk to, to i'm not being disrespectful mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm also not being a punk and letting them know like look i'm trying to talk to you bro but i'm not afraid of you so and you won't always have your people or me and mine so me and you will have to see each other it gives a certain humility to who you're speaking to you know what i'm saying even if you can't fight or whatever, they don't know, but they like respect that. Like, damn, this motherfucker came at me right. Right. And one in particular, this dude, this dude in prison now for the rest of his life, killed a cop. But <laughs> this dude said to me, he's like, yeah. He said, ah, right, yeah, you right. Nah, I ain't got no problem with you. He said, you ain't checking me though, but I ain't got no problem with you. You had to throw <laughs> that in there, you know what I'm saying? And that's cool. That's right, I ain't checking you. I ain't checking you, OG, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, and I respect it because we gotta have our, you know, we gotta still walk away. You gotta with some maintain dignity. your 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 machismo. You understand exactly, me? Exactly. And I'm not mad at that. You know what I'm saying? I respect that. The, I mean, the goal in conflict resolution is to create more conflict and, within that person. Right. At the same and time, smooth it out. Yeah. Just smooth it out. Yeah. So that get me to this thinking, right? Because, you know, a warrior knows that it's different ways to handle it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, any problem, right? Either he's going to go to the full might of physicality where it's violence. And right. in the violent result, he has to think about the extremity of how he's going to handle this situation, right. which is death, murder, Correct. kill, violence, Correct. right? But if that man doesn't have that capability, then he may think, okay, can this result in a fight? And then can I end it by, you know, physically dominating this person and mm -hmm. will that resolve it? But then, you know, in modern man, we live in a, in a time age of surveillance and snitching and mm -hmm. multi-different forms, right? right? that adds a lot more risk than necessity. Correct, correct. So the intelligent warrior has to now go to strategy, mm -hmm. right? And the intellectual strategist is going to think upon every dimension on which this problem can be solved, mm -hmm. right? That, in that moment, you become a chess player. Mm -hmm. You understand me? You have to think from your enemy's perspective, from your perspective, right? right? What can be the best outcome? What would be the worst outcome? Literally chess, bro. Yeah. yeah. So that's that form of thinking is masculine, mm -hmm. right? Like, I want people to start developing, like, okay, when am I thinking masculine and women, I, when am I not, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, when you really thinking about problem solving in a multi-dimensional level mm -hmm. to uh, solve this in the best way possible, mm -hmm. that is a masculine way of thinking 100%, through things. 100%. The emotional side, right, is not, it's fear-based, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's irrational, it's emotional, yeah. right? That isn't a masculine way of going about thinking of your problems, overstressing, mm -hmm. right? Consistent anxiety. Mm -hmm. Because once you, number one, understanding something, right? Gives you power over it, right? Correct. The moment you become aware and you understand it, it's like dealing with a snake. Right. You deal with the snake, 
no matter if it's poisonous or not, but as long as you know what kind of poison, what's the nature of the snake, now you can move around that snake however you want to. Right. Because you no longer have fear. Fear, right, uh, 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 becomes God, right? right Whatever you right. fear becomes your God. Mm -hmm. So you give that power to dominate you and control you. Right. So in that moment, instead of checking the fear that we have, instead of contemplating through the emotions to think on a higher level, we become subdued by them. We become slaves to them you become, and we move by them. It's a form of paralysis that, that comes from that. And I, I think about my early days of boxing. Well, now my early days, like when I was starting to get older, like a teenager, 17, 16, yeah. well, punches start hurting. Cause when you were a kid, not, nobody hurts each other. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But when you, you when when the boys start getting testosterone mm -hmm. and the punches start hurting, you know, you know, you will feel that energy in your stomach that that can be manifested as fear. But I'm like boxing. I, I mean, I give so much credit to boxing because it taught me how to win. Like it, it taught me the importance for me to win, right? So, and I feel like that's something that's on a lot of us black men from like big cities, right? Because it's very, where I'm from, like in Brooklyn, it's too many people, right? Mm. Uh, so resources are limited, right? So you gotta really fight hard right, to get right. out and to win or even playing football with everybody or whatever. So you can, you know, you wanna get picked for the team the next time. So you, you go all out, right? You do what you gotta do to win. So with boxing, like when I would have that, that and I don't call it fear, because didn't, it didn't manifest as fear. I would use it as fuel, like that mm. feeling is energy. And I would just use it as like, like I'm gonna kill this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like in my mind, I, I had this mentality that you you really, you really, you really back here warming up, bro. Like you think it's gonna be competitive. I would say this kind of shit to these yeah. guys, you know what I'm saying? As an amateur, I talk so much shit, I seem so cocky, but it wasn't. I was really turned up. Just like a, a dog, um, my dog one time, I had to pull him off a dog or two in his day because he's a very dominant breed. And if a dog runs from him, his is no training, nothing. It's just all instincts, right? The pink thing come out, he's turned on for the fight, for the hunt. You know mm. what I'm saying? He, get, he, he grabs the dog and he's about to start shaking. You know, you got to get him. But it's the same with us to an extent because we're still programmed, right? And there are some of us that have a lot of these innate alpha or dominant and masculine characteristics that some people just don't have, and that's fine. So, so what, what? So that point right there, the alpha, right? Because mm -hmm. I know we got it's a lot of uh, more constructed conversation around male alphas right. and things of that nature, yeah. right? But what makes a man alpha, right? You got the animal kingdom version, and then you got man's kingdom version. I think it's very similar. So it's a leader. It's a, a dominant, a dominant male in his little community in his his tribe, you know what I'm saying? So you say with a lion, um, you know, you have one lion, maybe his brother, um, but one of them is gonna be the guy, right? And the other guy has no access to those women, right? Other young lions come around, they see all these women, they wanna come around, mm -hmm. it's his job to go fight them off, kill them or be killed. If, if you, you kill them, everybody feels safe, respect, you know, they give you that respect. If that guy smash you, he take your, your pride, you know what I'm saying? and kill your sons, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like it's the same, right? So like, I look at my little world, my little ecosystem, and this is something very interesting that I was reading not long ago about how our civilization, our species have evolved, right? So I think you and I are torn from the same cloth, right? And this society would not be where it's at if all men were like us. No. You can't have a bunch of alpha males, right? You need beta males. This is a, a nation of beta people, right? And that's not to say that in a bad way. So let's say, let's say. So what's, describe a beta then as well. All right, so the guys that exist around the alpha that's not alpha. It's not even a bad thing. It's like this guy gets, let's take it to, to real so basic. Are there, so all right, because I know he's, by saying alpha and beta, it's almost saying they're polar opposites, but it's not it's the not, same at the not. same time. It's just levels of Position. It's a hierarchy, right? Yeah. So the alpha has, and I'm not saying that this is how we manifest this, but it kind of is. The alpha has access to more women, more resources. They usually have more, you know what I'm saying? So, and that's how it is in like with chimpanzees, bonobos, you name it, right? So 
But this is what happens. This is how the betas, uh, you know, won the war, right? <laughs> All right, so an alpha, his default is when his social position is threatened, he reacts with extreme violence fast. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about early humans and chimpanzees and other animals in the wild that have that, that similar hierarchy, right? So the betas had to get to come together and like, look guys, <laughs> it's like 30 of us. It's only one of him. If we just come around him, team up, da -da -da, pick his leg, you get that, do that, do that, whatever, we could take him down. And that's what happened. So that's how, that's why we have a democracy and not a monarchy, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even though none of these systems are perfect, but they kind of work. You know what I'm saying? Well, um, yeah, because it's, it's, it's like you go to the, uh, we, we know we live in a system where, well, if you don't know, the papal bull, right, is doctrines that basically states the laws of the church, mm -hmm. right, uh, the Roman Catholic Church, right, that the Pope gets to set. And he has what they call the conquest of discovery or the conquest of conquer, right? Okay. Meaning that if you conquer this land, you now own it. Like through okay. physical violence and brute force, yeah. you can go over there. But yeah. then they realize, like, and we just have it's every. Not nice. If we make that, well, if you make that law, then everybody's gonna keep trying to conquer each other yeah. any moment that they can. So they said, nah. They changed it to where it's, now they had a conquest of discovery, where it's saying that you can now discover places as long as you bring the God to those people first, mm -hmm. basically. So the the Catholic Church. When they came over to America and crashed and landed and caught a discovery, they were basically mm -hmm. saying, well, the, these millions of Native Americans don't believe in what we believe in. They don't believe in yeah, our God. Yeah. And our God is law. Right. So if we bring our God to them, I now discovered this place and it is now mine. Right. Now we put it under our doctrine and we own this forever. Yeah. Literally, this is how they went right, over right. throughout the world That's because man. these men understood that you know, it was better to conquer over time than just space. Right. That if I can create rules and laws that no matter who is physically here, I'm still running this and I still own it. Right. Then they legacy, their institution, their power is secured. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So in that difference between men who conquer through physical might and then men who conquer through intellect. Mm -hmm. Right. Because when we talk about alphas, that's an aspect of it too, with brain power, right? right? Your right. ability to be able to think, and, and, mm -hmm. and that goes back to conflict resolution because mm -hmm. when you look at the so-called hierarchy of alpha to betas, mm -hmm. sometimes that alpha could be in second position or third position, but he got to play his part for now. Right. You right. understand me? Yeah. But when opportunity comes and resources matches intellect, then he can bump up in position. Mm -hmm. And then that's where it brings me to this definition of the difference between warriors and soldiers mm -hmm. we got a society of everybody wants to be warriors mm -hmm. nobody wants to be soldiers right, right. and right. that destroys the ability to organize right and to win wars especially from those who are losing right you understand yeah. me so it's like i'm gonna get i want to get your definition of a warrior and a soldier but i'll give you my breakdown okay so you know a warrior is somebody more so defined by his instincts Mm -hmm. Right. Like if you got a warrior, a warrior go more so had that long hair. You mm -hmm. understand me, which is his antennas that attaches to nature, connecting his intuition mm -hmm. to learn how to move. He, right. He's he's more so moving by a code of conduct. Right. You understand me? That's his warrior's way on how he's going to go about finding and, and living in life. Mm -hmm. uh, but then that soldier is one more so he takes orders. So that soldier, you go see him with the cut. Right. right in the military they make you submit to get a cut for discipline right, right. And it's right. more self-control because right. it's not about individual perspective right right, right, right. And individuality but what you right. add to the collective right so it's a sacrifice to where nah <laughs> i don't have to agree with the order but i'm going to submit to it right 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 and it doesn't take any away from the masculine entity of energy because it takes more energy to submit than it does rebel oh yeah for sure. you understand me it's especially for do. a powerful person right because a person may tell you the right order, but you got a disagreement. Yeah. But it ain't about you because there's a general, then there's the soldier. There's rules. So it's like right now we got a lot of people who want to be warriors when they should be soldiers, which will push them in line and position and it allow the whole organization to move forward and grow. But we deal with a warrior, which can be more emotional. Mm -hmm. A soldier, devoid your emotion, right. cut off all your personality at right. this moment and just right. follow the goddamn order so we can win and the war. from being an exceptional soldier, that your actions as that soldier can elevate you to that warrior position. 100%. Right. 
You know, you've earned it. What, what at, to the general position. Right, exactly. You understand to me? General, exactly. You've earned it legitimately. I learned my best, I learned my best ways uh, in, in development of my character through mm -hmm. listening to other men. You understand indeed, me? Indeed, when, yeah. when I had to go through FOI training and I got a drill yeah. and I don't want to and it's mm -hmm. the hot sun and I want to kill these niggas who giving the order. Right. Nah, <laughs> I, I got you, bro. Yeah. I, that's discipline and, and control. Yeah. I got a I got a big homie, his name Leroy, Leroy Coleman out in Arizona. Um, his nickname was Man, and he was just that, a man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He taught me so much. Like he went through this period where um he almost went to the joint for life, right? For a murder. A murder he didn't commit, mm. right? Well, one of his enemies. And he knew who did it, but he stuck to a code that we all live by because we was in the streets. You know what I'm saying? That's what you do. People on the outside can call it stupid all they want, but if you're in this world, you follow these rules, right? And he did that. So after about nine months, he got exonerated because they found the killer's T-shirt mm. and the DNA. So thank God for that. And I watched, he was a menace, bro, but I watched him literally, he didn't say, I need, to, I need to get right, I need to change my life. Mm -hmm. He didn't say none of that. He just did it gradually over time, and I watched, I observed. I never even told him this to this day. I learned so much from you, but I, I watched him. His, it wasn't his words, his actions taught me so much, and I follow suit. So there's been plenty of times in my life where I played subordinate. I got under somebody that was greater than me at that time, right. and I learned a lot, right? Because when, you, when you're the best, when you think you're the best, you, you're not learning anything. Right. You already got it figured out. Right. And I never want to have that position, man. Like, I have people, like, I'm surrounded by a lot of beta people who are very wise with a lot of things. Right. And they have a lot of, they have a lot of things on them that I wish I had that I just don't, right? Like, man, you're so nice, bro. Like, how do you do that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I know how I'm perceived a lot, but it is what it is. I'm, I'm who I am. But, um, and I have no qualms with who I am, but sometimes I do want, you know, I, I hear, oh man, they just, they was intimidated. I'm like, for what? Like, I'm nice. Yeah. I'm saying, I'm nice. You know what I'm Like, scare motherfuckers. <laughs> I'm nice, man. <laughs> Love me. Nah, but it's all good, though. It's like everybody, <laughs> you know, everybody everybody has a, a, a role in this movie, bro. Yeah. And, but when it come back to the rules, like what you were saying, rules are so important, man. Like, we are, man, it's crazy. I, I like t talking about matters of evolution because it helps understand why things are the way they are and all the other species of humans that we beat out because we had the ability to develop these con these abstract concepts like rules right and all agree that yeah this should mean that it allows us to give us order you know what i'm saying so they could never get out of chaos they were stronger than us they were way more alpha than us you know what i'm saying more powerful but we were we were the the uh, maybe the fact that we were I'm talking about in what kind of early humans versus like other pro magnon man, astropithecus, uh, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, and, and we were Homo sapiens sapien. We were the runts. You know what I'm saying? They were like other shorter, stubby humans, but we were runts, right? And but it made us have to think more. You know what I'm saying? Use this instead of just like physical. There's a book that I read that I really love. It's called Body Mind Mastery by Dan Millman. And it's somewhat of a sports psychology book, but it's very practical and you can apply it to every aspect of life. But it does talk about kids, right? When kids are playing sports and it, it, it gave reference to like the big kids that always got picked out the gate, they usually burn out like early. The smaller kids that didn't get to play as much, they watched and they got good mentally, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And their bodies are preserved. And they, they tend to go on to have the long careers. I mean, look at a Floyd Mayweather, you know what I'm saying? This guy fought well into his 40s at the top of the sport, you know what I'm saying? So um, when we don't default to just our physicality and brute and, and, and power and aggression, you know, we can, we, we can have a, a more quality of life, right? Well, see, but, and that's key because masculinity is not defined by physicality. Right. You understand me? That's that's machismo. You understand me? Right. That's going into hyper masculinity, yeah. right? Defining yourself by these features and saying that this is what gives you value and power. And it's dominance. a low level le yeah. uh, of masculinity. So the mind is the most masculine thing a man Indeed. has. Indeed. You understand Indeed. me? And it, and that's why you go to prison yards. It'd be a small guy running that shit because he mm -hmm. got the mind to tell everybody else the muscle how to move. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And, well, I, and not in every sense. I, yeah, because I we, you know we, we know not every sense. When I've been 
when I when I'm in there, I would think about homies of mine that's super big. I'm like, yeah. Big Rob, like you be straight in here, bro. Like sir. Oh yeah, yeah. It's just it's a it's a that's really animal kingdom. And, and, and some of those that were actual warriors though. Yeah, yeah. Because cause some of the big men, since they don't know how to fight and they don't haven't been in many fights, they right. afraid of the pain yeah, and that's, yeah, that's true. So that's they don't want to go through that. But combat. I seen I seen some really really formidable dudes. You know what I'm saying? Oh no, it's so our greatest warriors is locked and up. And think about when Mike Tyson was in prison, they asked him there's one interview like, Were you in solitary confinement? He's like, no. Did you have any fights? Not yeah, one. No. Nobody fuck with yeah. Mike. You know what I'm saying? Because that's real. And but there, he also was like, bro, I'm, I'm like, this is good guys in there crazier than me. I wasn't trying to fight nobody. Cause right. They but, fucking but stabbed I me as you, quick that as they part, can think. Yeah. But I guarantee he would have been fine. Not if, yet, if he yeah. was with this, if he was, if his mind wasn't right, he'd, he'd still been fine. He'd been in there way longer, but he'd have been fine. He's too formidable. And yeah, if his you, mind was on domination. Yeah, and you got to think, man, a person like that, a winner, somebody who's who's tapped into winning, you know, he's trying to figure out how to win against the best in the world that train the way he does. Right. So you in prison with dudes that's just tough. It's yours if you want it. But that's who wants that. You right. know what I'm saying? But that's still the politics of the, of the mental alchemy that goes in there. Right. That's true. You understand me? It's like because two guys at the same uh, same built. You understand mm -hmm. me? Which one gonna run this shit? One mm -hmm. that actually has the mental capability to run it. Right. You understand right. me? He gonna outthink this other guy easy. He may right. play politics in there to get somebody knocked off their position. Right. He might That's not real. even have to touch him. That's real. You understand me? He may send a little guy to go in yeah. there and do something to yeah. him where he didn't even see it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the part. It's like, that's what we dealing with, right? right? In today's society, men that find themselves at dominant positions in life and power positions, they got there not from physicality, mm -hmm. right? Look at the difference between you got Francis and Guno. He the powerful puncher in the world, yeah, right. But Dana White worth five hundred million dollars. Nah, for real. You understand yeah, me? Nah, it's, it's, a, it's a problem over there. Yeah, that yeah. UFC got a big issue. Dana White is the biggest pimp on the planet. Oh my God, bro! They paid what's the brother from the UK? Uh, the boxer that Anthony lost Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua, fifteen million to not fight, <laughs> and yeah. he got paid more than almost all the UFC fighters. The whole roster. The whole year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for the roster, it's that was that was it's less bad. than a million. It's bad, man. It's bad over there. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's a classic case of, of course, you know, first you get opportunity and you got right. people. He he was starting the salt mines and things of that nature. Yeah. But it's like where we at right now when you're dealing with people that are savvy in business, business mm -hmm. is warfare, number one. 100%. That's what most people don't look at it. Economics right. and business is right. warfare. Right. You can go dominate a people by bringing in institutions that they don't understand, right? right? No matter how strong in those people is, unless they willing to physically, violently oppose you, yeah. then you go dominate those people with your systems. Right, right. right? But you know, interesting, interesting thing about Dana White, Dana White keeps tough dudes with him. Like I've heard stories, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, he so got it's so it's you, so well, you're not gonna pimp the greatest fighters in the it, world and right. not keep killers with but you. But even getting to where he's at, so here's the thing that that I'm con cognizant of, like you need the systems, you need that business savvy, you need all of those attributes right there, but it helps to have the other stuff too. The army, the army, the physical, the the mind. See, it's not even just physical; it's like mentally being down to go there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Win, lose, or draw, we're going there. Yeah. I don't care if you, you, you might whoop me, but I'm biting a chunk out your face. Yeah. It's not going to be easy. It's not yeah. going to be fun for you. You know what I'm saying? So people who are down to turn that up, to turn that on, and, we, you know, it's been a lot of discussion about this. I've been talking to a lot of people about this, too, because you let Jordan Peterson say dangerous men are good for society. A good man is a very, very dangerous man who has that under voluntary control. They like, oh yeah, but when I say it, they like, no, no, dangerous, no, dangerous black men are good for society right. specifically. I'm gonna just exactly. say that. that's, so that's it's, always been my thesis. Yeah, man, and dangerous, so so people don't get it misconstrued. Is like people with the capacity for violence, for to to harm others, but not out there just abusing that, right? Not being a tyrant. You you tuck that away and you use it if necessary to defend yourself or your family or your loved ones or anything of, uh, for justice, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so your definition of dangerous is people that are willing to live, die, and kill for a cause. No, people that's willing to live, die, and kill regardless, you know what I'm saying? But, because dangerous don't, is not good or bad, but to, be, to have the capacity of being dangerous, 
but so having the willingness to kill is your your area of danger. Yeah, you, you you know, or or get over harm people, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because look, all's fair in war, but also all's fair in love as well. So when it comes to you securing a situation for your your loved ones, sometimes other people get hurt. You know what I'm saying? All right, so. All right, so I'm gonna play God's advocate on this. Um, because when it comes to the violence aspect, right, and being dangerous and your capacity to be able to commit the ultimate violence, which is murder, right, that does make a man dangerous. Then you have the courageousness that makes a man dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. His willingness to speak out, right, even though he may die, right, or to do things even though he may die. Right. Right. That's another level of dangerousness and bravery, bravery. Yeah, because you have to ask yourself. Right. When it comes to, you know, movements and, and, and cultures and societies changing. Right. More societies and things have changed and more people have died because of what was said by the tongue. That's true. Oh, you yeah, understand sure, me? That's sure. that's one of the most dangerous yeah. things that 100%. a person can utilize yeah. is their voice right. and their mind and the capacity. That's why I said. For me, it's, it's to be able to live, die, and kill for a cause. Mm -hmm. And I say cause because the being able to point that energy in a direction mm -hmm. is what makes it dangerous. Right. It's like in the streets of America right now, mm -hmm. <clears throat> there are hundreds of thousands of black men who have killed before. Right. You understand me? And are willing to kill again. Mm -hmm. But that collective energy is not pointed towards any cause that we can utilize as a culture Correct. in a manner of building out some type of excellence, a system, an institution. Mm -hmm. In fact, those same black men probably would be afraid to get on the platform and say something. 100%. Right? They'd, they'd be afraid of the cop roll up on them right. and they tuck in and run in. And right. They're afraid of the system, right. but they're willing to kill. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, that makes them dangerous in a certain aspect, but it limits. Mm. You understand me? How powerful they are, mm. right? So it's a difference between the, the dangerousness and the power because I want black men to be dangerous in a capacity that they are fearless, they are willing to speak truth to power, they are willing to live and die for a cause, you understand me? And they're right. willing to give up their energy for, you understand me, the continuity of us growing out this uh, uh, or some sort of institution and agenda. Yeah, it's interesting, bro, you say that because you are right. So I don't even see them as dangerous when they can only kill themselves and each other. You know, it's very, it's, it's really like they're doing the enemy's work, right? They are. And they know that it ain't as bad because they don't like us anyway. They're not, you know, I know I can't do that to that white boy over there. I'm going to do it to you, nigga. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because they know our life isn't valued as Correct. much as Correct. the rest of the dominant society. And we just need a shift in that perspective, man. They, they need to hear people like us, people like EYL, M500, Wall Street Trapper, like, they need to see us in these high levels, not switching it up, acting like we ain't who we are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Talking to us like we that talk. That part. You feel me? So they need to see that. And they need to see, they need to see how, you know, white people respect us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They need to see how, like, they don't see it, man. That's it. However, I do, I do feel like there is a shift in the culture happening. You know what I'm saying? Look at how many people, like you, you posted a list the other day of like, why y'all not posting these yeah. black uh, uh, creators? But that's cool, like fuck them. Mm -hmm. We all posting ourselves and each other and all yeah, of that. Yeah. So you didn't have that five, 10 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, even with me, like over the years that I've been in my space, very vocal about things, bro, the blacks in my industry, it's pathetic, pathetic. I would, I would see the shit that they put. I'd be like, yo, shake my head. Like, what? You know what I'm saying? So I love seeing you, seeing Cheat Code TV, seeing all these brothers. And it's not all about political issues, no. Because what the, the, the real advocacy and the real war that we need to be fighting is here, is, is within ourselves. Yeah. So each person is out there um, representing a healthy lifestyle, representing financial freedom, representing just different things, different aspects to make us grow and to make us live good lives. And that's what, that's what needs to be injected into the minds of our people, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And, and we are, we have that somewhat, everybody got swag, got, got dope energy. So 
you know, the entertainment factor is there too. You know what I'm saying? Because that's we're black people are, are an expressive, creative people. We need that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So we're they're getting these messages in really cool ways. So I do feel a huge shift in society, and it's only going to be more. Like I feel like in another three, four years, it's going to be triple, quadruple us. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I love that. You know, so the shift is happening. And here's the thing too, bro. You can't. Social media is great. Let me let me bring it back to 20, 2012. That's when like Instagram really popped, right? So think about what used to be just, just the standard of beauty in this country, right? It was Eurocentric based. It was skinny and no knock to, 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 to Euro, Europeans. But there was a standard because they controlled the media. They controlled the magazines, the people on TV. Right. It was one image of beauty, right? And I'm not gonna say they're not beautiful, but it was just one element of beauty, right? Now you have Instagram, so everybody got a, is a voyeur into their world. You see, you see these, these black, these Latino women, these, these curvy women with beautiful big lips, hips, right? And what happened? There's white girls now that look like, I, I can't tell if they're white or not. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, and I'm bringing that up as an example of you cannot suppress the natural state of things but for so long. Well, you, you know, know everything has to come back to a point of origin. And it comes, right, and it's coming out. <laughs> it's like, I love it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love it. When people get mad at like white girls braiding their hair, I'm like, they paying homage to you. Like, who cares, you know what I'm saying? Well, I it's, mean, I get aspects of the cultural appropriation aspect that black women argue saying that they are now able to benefit from things that were a detriment to us, right? Mm -hmm. Not being able, number one, it's like even the modern industry is starting to change. Well, right. they want black women because they got some braids or they in this niche or that mm -hmm. niche. But when a white woman is celebrated from doing something that is historically a black right. woman's style, yeah. right? And then black women have still not been able to get that celebration. Right. It's like, they don't, like it's, it's a kick in the face. See, you understand me? But that's, that's being in it, looking at it. But when you take a bird's eye view, you look down from above and you think about history. I think about history. Like my life is predicated on the fact that I'm gonna die. So every move I'm, I'm making, I'm thinking about my children. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about how people remember me, remember us, things like that. So when you look at it from a, a bigger perspective, yeah, of course it hurts right now. It's a little uncomfortable, you know what I'm saying? But 10 years is gonna be a lot different. 20 years is gonna be a lot different. And then you're gonna have these stories when like, yo, this is when, you know, black people were getting fired for having dreadlocks. You know what I'm saying? All this shit. But white people weren't, you know, you hear the stories, you see the evolution of it, and people will really see it for what it was, you know what I'm saying? And listen, we're living, we're, ne we're never dying, bro. We live in an age of video content, right? So we have, there's video of us talking about these things in a hundred years, maybe it's a hundred years ago, right now, a well, hundred yeah. years in the future. Yeah. They're hearing us talk about these things, right? So it's beautiful. So we, it's up to us to rewrite history and make it, uh, more accurate, and a lot of us are doing that. So, like, I really appreciate you, you know what I'm saying? And Likewise. I appreciate a lot of brothers, like, I, it feels so good to, I'd be so proud seeing my brothers shining, yeah, speaking intelligently, looking good, being fly, inspiring people, teaching people how to make money, teaching people how to get in shape, you know what I'm saying? So this is such a valuable thing that we're in right now. This is such an, uh, a special time that we're in. It's hard to appreciate it because we're in it, yeah, but you know, you know, we, I, I, it, 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 I think, well, for me, I can appreciate it because growing up, the type of conversations we having right now has mm -hmm. always been, you know, the the table conversation, right. the, the the chill conversation with my brothers. It's yeah. always been that type of cipher, mm -hmm. and then there were certain points where, you know. I would get admonished from regular society for speaking like this, right. for being a masculine man, Same. right? For being yeah. a masculine black Muslim man. Like for mm -hmm. me, it's like it's the ultimate minority to be honest, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but at the end of the day, we always decided to conquer and make space for ourselves. And it was like the very things that I'm celebrated for now, I was hated four years ago. Right. You understand yeah. me? My political positions, my right. social positions, all of them. Mm. Now, things that people be like, they love me for. Oh, you talking that God energy now. Yeah. It's like, it's, but I go back to yeah. my childhood I it was up until then. adulthood. Yeah. They was mad. Right. Big angry. So nah, bro, I get to see year to year changes and, and it's, shifts. It's interesting because, you know, when I moved to the West Coast, like it was way different. Like, I'm like 18, 19, and I'm saying peace God, peace Allah. You know what I'm saying? 
I'm self Lord and master. I'm saying, you know, I'm, I'm communicating. Yeah. There would be little pockets of, of brothers, you know what I'm saying? But I was a weirdo. I was a weirdo. And where you grew up at? Brooklyn, New York. I would, well, you know, I, would, I mean, you know, from Harlem to Brooklyn, mm -hmm. the culture didn't transition to shift the sign? No, 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 from Brooklyn to Arizona. It mm. didn't, it was not. Oh, it, okay, the you West Coast, Arizona with it. Yeah, it I'm was, about to it was say, like, Brooklyn, they was, no. No, 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 no. Brooklyn is fine. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, why, yeah. I, I, that's what these seeds were planted in me. All right, so, all right, so let's, and let me it was get very people common. Some, let's it get the people some history before we go okay. to Arizona, right? So, you and, you know, you got Harlem 125th, that special place. You understand mm. me when you're talking about knowledge being born, man, Correct. it's the first. Correct. Uh, at the, of this taping, right? It's a day of born. Um, and there you go look at hip hop and the timeline of what hip hop was doing. The conversation was different. The language was different, right? right? People wasn't saying God as much as saying Allah, yeah. right? Uh, Jesus wasn't even a word being utilized in hip hop for the most part. That was at a all. dirty word. You understand yeah. me? That didn't come for years later, yeah. right? And hip hop was being brought up based on these principles. Correct. You understand me? Correct. A godhood and, and cipher, right? right? And so that time was, was special because it was creating a standard in mm. which black men were decided to use this language and right. start building with each other and mm. utilizing, you know, creativity to increase their they social uh, 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 levels. Correct. For lack of better terms. But, you know, and not but, but and, you know, growing up in that time, how, so take me back a timeline of you walking down the street and hearing somebody say peace, God, and what that meant to you. Man, it, it, it makes you feel good, you know? And I feel like that was the purpose of, I feel like one of the intents of like, say more scientists, uh, the nation of Islam, the nation of gods and earth. I feel like at that point, we were so beaten up after the civil rights movement, after all of the stuff we went through, we needed somebody to be like, nah, be strong, black man, be proud, chest up, head up, you a Absolutely. God, you a God. So that shit worked, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It worked on me, you know? so. I loved it, bro. Peace, God. Like, yeah, that's yeah. what's up. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and it gave me a certain type of fearlessness to live and to experience things, you know? And, um, and like, if we go to, go to, like, meetings and the brothers are building in the park, it'd be, like, half ratchet, but, but a lot of wisdom being spoken. You know what I'm saying? Because I did, I did feel like the brothers in the nation of God and earth, it was practicing the nation of Islam doctrine, but without discipline, without refinement, mm -hmm. like real refinement. Right. Cause cats would be out there with 40s, smoking, drinking, right, you know what I'm right. saying? But building, but still poisoning the body, right? right? So, so it was that element. It gave me a lot of wisdom and insight. So then I went to private school for, for a short period of time. My grandmother put me in a Catholic school and we go to church there and I'm like, what? <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like literally a culture a shock. It's like first of all, it's like what are y'all even talking about? Yeah. You're not even speaking English half the yeah. time. And then it was like it was repulsive to to me, like the images. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're a black kid, you grow up in nothing but blacks, Puerto Ricans, right? Puerto Ricans black too. And then you go to school. There's other black kids there too, but everything is white. And it's scary. It was scary to us. Yeah. Because it would be like a, a statue of St. Francis with a spirit and a demon. Yeah. And I'm like, why is this in yeah. here? We kids. Like, no, why is this in here? That's, I mean, it, it take me back to my childhood growing up. So I grew up, and I'm born in St. Louis, raised in Oakland, right? Okay. In Oakland, there was a school called Lodge Educational Center. Okay. So I went there up until middle school. That's where we learned the drill. We learned the science. We learned right. the teachers, mathematics, yeah. everything, right? separate classes with boys and girls, right? Mm -hmm. Real, like, everything I learned there, I basically still remember to this right, day, right, right, right. right? The foundation was solid as far as the education was concerned. Mm -hmm. Then I remember going to public school for the first time. Mm -hmm. When I went to public school Coaching and shop. how crazy the kids were, it was like everybody was, whatever they considered to be ADHD at that time, that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I remember riding the school bus back and the kids is mannish, hella sexually active, yeah. you understand me? And it was just, they was Bro. not as intelligent because cats would be 17 years old in the fifth grade, you understand me? And yeah. it was crazy. I'm right, like, right. yo, this is really different. And then at the same time, it's like, 
our private school, we taught militant training and like right. to be a soldier. So yeah. it's not the same as somebody going through a private school but not getting that toughening. You right, understand right, me? Right, right, right. So I seen them. And so when you talk about the undisciplined part, it's like they thought they was tough, but they was really just hyperactive and undisciplined. Right, right. It, there wasn't their power was not refined. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No refinement. Look at the, the mathematics power refinement, right? You, you need to refine power or it's, it's reckless. Absolutely. You know so, but bro, so take it a step further. When I moved to the West Coast, I went to Arizona State. Mind blown. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I got to step my intellect up around these white people. Yeah. Bro, they did nothing but party. Yeah. I stayed in the dorm. My, my first time, I had to get off the dorm because I'm like, I don't do, this ain't my life. Are you not afraid of your parents? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they would literally be up all night partying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, it wasn't for me. That was never, listen, I don't mind partying now whatever and enjoy myself but that i'm 44 years old you know what i'm saying i needed to get in a position to where i ain't worried about it. No, i'm good yeah i'm like mama say too much too much uh plan joking no good exactly and too much good times make you weak you know yeah. what i'm saying it's celebrating so, without wins make you weak correct correct so it's like yeah i'll do whatever i want to do but i've earned my spot to be able to do it you know what i'm right. saying it's a lot of people that because that can and if I do, like right now, if I was a, to hang out, party, ask anybody in my house, I'm up early in the morning at the gym. Yeah. I don't care if I slept two hours. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's for me, you know what I'm saying? It's for y'all to watch and, and take heed, but it's for me, you know what I'm saying? I need that to make sure I'm keeping my, my planets in orbit and, and, and aligned properly. So, so it's like, all right, so in, in accordance with manhood, I, I, I just having this thought is like, the, the idea of over partying, you understand me and overindulging and the gluttonous and you understand me like is that considered a masculine thing i don't think so i don't even think that that's a necessarily a masculine or feminine thing right. i just think that's a weakness yeah. and that's setting you up for failure you said too much fun right i prefer i talk to people about this all the time i've mastered making difficult things fun you know what i'm saying yeah. like right now so and it's all subjective to what's difficult enjoy person right so like i hate swimming right and i would swim to help me get in shape for a fight because it really helps me right but i'm not good at it right yeah i got a lot of muscle real dense so i don't float you know what I'm saying? it's taking me a lot more effort so i just started back swimming like two weeks ago you know what i'm saying it sucks but i love it there's a certain feeling that i get that how difficult it is that right, excites right, right. me it excites me to i can't wait till i, I don't feel that no more or it take longer for me to feel that you yeah. know what i'm saying and i be trying to tell people this like Life is so easy if you really understand it, right? And we use, we take, and I always say this, like make life your bitch. So stressful situations, like things that are hard, run to that shit. Be excited about a difficult task. Oh, that's, oh yeah, I thought that was hard. All right, watch this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then the more you do that, you become so, you, you push that shit back. You become so resilient to hard times and stress. There's nothing. That way, when I have fun, I have a lot of fun because I make hardship fun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And my life is very boring most of the time. Not really, but no. it's, it's very. It's, it's just not what society considers right, to be. Right. Like fun. I think this this is the the probably one of the chief issues. That's why I say the mm. word enjoyment, right? Because right. like when you enjoying what you're doing, that's fun. Correct. Right. Correct. No matter what you're doing, if right. you're enjoying it, that's fun. Right. Like you could be studying and researching something, be learning something, and your brain developing and growing, and you like the fact you connecting these dots and you having fun. Mm -hmm. Right. While another person needs to have a, a lower level of fun. Right. Because there's intellectual enjoyment. Correct. There's physical enjoyment. Correct. There's sexual enjoyment. Different types. Right. Financial enjoyment. Right. So it's like we never normalize different ways to enjoy ourselves in society, mm -hmm. especially in our culture. Right. Because, I, and, and I can only speak from our culture because I haven't grew up in everybody. So when right. people ask me, why you say the culture? Because I, I didn't grow up well, in an Asian, yeah. white, Jewish, yeah. Yeah. Indian family. Yeah. I only know our type of culture. Correct. I study it, I'm universal. So it's like, what may be enjoyful in the Asian family, mm -hmm. right? What they may find joyful, the way that they go out to eat or they may play mahjong or it's mm -hmm. whatever. That may be joyful for them. What may be joyful for a, a white family to go play golf, even though golfing is still a good sport. Mm -hmm. Golf or whatever they may do, that's joyful for them. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Whether you're in the Jewish community and it's, it's, it's Hanukkah or whatever it is, and that's joyful for them. Right. But when it comes to our culture, we look at joy as like club, mm -hmm. club again, mm -hmm. club again. Mm -hmm. Like 
entertainment, mm -hmm. you understand me, sex, mm -hmm. right? We have a very fast death culture, yeah. right? Anything that gets us faster to it, we got a very necromantic relationship with death in our culture. True. We celebrate things after people die. Mm -hmm. Even our activist movements are about dead bodies mm -hmm. rather than living souls. Right. So it's like, once we get back to the celebration of life, which is the spiritual aspect of it, mm -hmm. right? Because we don't exist on that spiritual plane. We think we are spiritual people, right. but we not. Yeah. And it's not that we're not, but we're not actively not participating tapping and tapping yeah. into it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how would I know? It's because when I go into nature, I don't see it dominated by us. Right. We were taught in the hood to make fun of the fact that white folks be in nature. Mm -hmm. that, that makes right. no sense. Right. And then we want to be connected to the motherland. Right. So we got this. It, we don't know nothing about we, no. Yeah. But when we get money and we go travel, first place we go is to Europe. Mm -hmm. see, not, see, see, like in that song, Ten Commandment, I was playing earlier, it said, fuck a visa. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to Ghana. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, I have no desire. Like, listen. But the yeah. Eiffel, Eiffel Tower is ugly. Look, I, it's sure, sure, oh. Paris. <laughs> yeah. I hate Paris. I hate France, right? <laughs> I yeah. just like Balenciaga. They fly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know it's a French uh, 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 company, I think, or Italian, but I, I just like the shirt. Hey, shout you know out saying? to my French flowers, because last time I was in in uh, the UK, they what they called me, uh, Disnouf, uh, Keith. I might have said that wrong. Okay. That sounds German in the I, motherfucker. Hey, listen, <laughs> <laughs> I got the video. If I can send All it to right. a mention, we're going to plug know. it in. But yeah. I was out there. I went. I spoke at the U, uh, the mosque in the UK, right. but it was hella French followers. Right, you understand right, right. me? They pulled up and they was like, "Listen, we love you." Yeah. Like they were saying it in their language, but it that's was just dope, dope culture dope, because it's dope. black people in France. So shout out. So to them. it's a lot of us in France because France was one of the great colonizers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We speak the colonizers' language, even us, with the mm, English. Yeah. So when I say I don't like France or Paris, it ain't the people; it's the history of it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? France, Belgium. Uh, yeah. UK, like, you know, the, the, the colonizers, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I got, I got my issues, you know what I'm saying? Well, especially so. the, listen, the, speaking of that, I went to the British Museum. Mm -hmm. I got to send you this clip too, Amechi, because it's a funny clip. I'm talking to the little cops out there. <laughs> 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 it's funny, I got to show you after this. But uh, I went to the British Museum, man, and, and it's a museum of all stolen artifacts, right? Literally. Yeah, I, like, I know about that, yeah. It's, when you go in there, it's such, they, they're it's showing egregious. you around. It's egregious. It's, 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 it's mind-boggling. And not only I went there, I went to Parliament. Mm -hmm. You go to Parliament, there's this huge roof when there's one part of it, mm -hmm. and it's a Viking ship, mm -hmm. right? And they got, like, spike heads of the people that the Vikings had killed and conquered. Now, the building is huge. Like, it's like three times the size of this. They ships right. were huge back then. Right, it's right. crazy. Then you walk through these doors and these, these halls before you get to, like, uh, the part where, you understand, they hold court. Right. So they have uh, ceremonies, right, mm -hmm. where they, they follow the same traditions for the last few hundred years. Right. The queen has to walk specifically mm -hmm. in this one direction to get to the court. Right. And at the top, there's these four saints, right? Mm -hmm. A Europe that's looking down over, mm -hmm. right? And, and blessing this sanctimony. Right. And then in this hallway, there's this hallway of different places that they've colonized and, and, and killed people. Mm -hmm. And it's literally paintings of them murdering these people. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Wow, and like, this is their hall you gotta walk through first. I'm not even mad that they part of their history. I'm no, not mad at but, it. But here, peep the game. This is why it's so hard for us to get into the game. Mm -hmm. Because they got rituals for the last hundreds of years that right. they follow in participation and mm -hmm. practice. Mm -hmm. They celebrate every aspect of their history that brought them up to this point today. Mm -hmm. Right? They have standards that allow them to dominate because the frequency of them standards is so ingrained into their culture and those who got the power and lead. Mm -hmm. That is very hard to dominate a people right. who have culture and standards. Right? right? and have rituals and traditions, mm -hmm. right? We don't even realize so much of our language comes out of their standards and right. their rituals oh, yeah, sure. and passed down and given to us. Yeah. And we think we originated it. Mm -hmm. So it's this not until we create our own, right? Mm -hmm. Then we can be on our own. Right. Because most, a lot of stuff that we do is borrowed culture. You understand me? I mean, almost everything that we do is yeah. borrowed culture. And it's, and it's not a bad thing, because it's not like we, we hate our culture. We've been, our hard drive had been reset, wiped out, and here, they dumped Windows 96 on us. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it, it's not our fault. You we know? don't know where we're from, that's why. Exactly. But see, All right, so I'm going to ask you something. We don't know where we're from, right? Black people run around saying African-American, right? Mm -hmm. 
the whole continent. Like, yeah. What part of Africa? You know what I'm yeah. saying? You don't, you don't hear European American. You hear Italian American, French. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. but nonetheless, it's like, how do you view us now, right? Do you see it as you know we're African originally, or question. do you just feel because here's the thing. When we, when, if we be literal about it and really think about it, everybody's African, everyone, right? So life started there, right? So how far do we go back? Or do we start where we, st where we start writing our own history? When it comes to as far as how we view ourselves today or how we should, or, you know, I can't really tell people how to view themselves, but how I view it. And it's broken down in many different ways, right? So you got the African descendants of slaves, right? Mm -hmm. The Eidos, right? So you got that crew. Uh, then you have, if we do our genealogy research, our attachment to American Indians, right? Because mm -hmm. this continent was filled with hundreds of millions of people before they came and literally committed genocide. Right. So if we was to do our genealogy, we will find that we actually could come under the treaties in America, Right. And then that will connect us to these laws and we'll get certain benefits and rights to certain land. Mm -hmm. Right. But we don't do our studies. Right. Or who is John Horse. Right. And who are these figures where you have black and Native Americans either uh, coming together and mating. Mm -hmm. Right. And living together and sharing culture. Right. Or that's just who we were native because those were very dark skinned people, darker right. than you and I. Right. 100%. Right. And so then you got the percentage of us that were brought over here, right, right in ships and imported to do work, yeah. right? And so it's like me and my conquest, I did that 23 and me, mm -hmm. which I didn't do it because once you realize is that number one, they take certain DNA from certain haploid groups and be like, okay, you have similarities to this group in Ghana, so and it's like most likely you're. Of yeah. course I do because. Yeah. I'm melanated, but that right. don't tell me where my family come from. Nah. That just gives D me portions DNA of segments that's connected. That. It can't. DNA can't tell you that. So we have the genealogy research to understand that. But to this point, it's like, if you are a, a melanated person in America, you have to know, number one, uh, who your family is. So I think the most important thing we can do is genealogy records and research. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? So that will let you know the extension of where you come from on this land. You understand me? Yeah. There's different tribes in America that you can mm -hmm. connect with, mm -hmm. right? Then when you do trace root research from there, if you want to go further back, they have, I think it's called the uh, African Ancestry, where they yeah. actually help you do more, take I've you directly out to, to a tribe. Have you, have you dealt with them? I bought the thing, but I haven't done it yet. Okay. So it's like, I look at... This is, black people got to do better because I reached out to them. Yeah. Like, yo, I, I can do some promo, whatever, 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 whatever. Yeah. and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, okay, it's interesting. But I, I, did, I did do Ancestry as well.com, and it's all records. It's yeah. really interesting to see. Yeah. I'm all the way back to World War One. Yeah. Of, of my family that yeah. fought, and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got, I got a bro who do genealogy, we, but we, he got to really know everybody's names. We fought in the first war without being citizens, without being even considered humans. In yeah. this country, this is our. This is ours. You know what I'm saying? I used to have a huge. But before um, that war, so let me let me show you. Let me make sure I'm saying it right. Because the brother named, I think his name was John Horse. I want to make sure I'm, I'm saying his name right. But he was like a person that fought in like four different wars, mm -hmm. right? But he fought for the American side. He fought with the Native Americans, mm -hmm. right? He fought yeah. war all over. So I'll show you his. That's John Horse. His story is amazing when you read it. So he had to fight for his freedom multiple times and win it. So he fought for his freedom um, against the Native Americans, mm -hmm. but they, slavery was different, right? right. Um, basically, he came under their jurisdiction. He was working for them. He had to fight for them. But then he also fought alongside of, with them, mm -hmm. you understand me, um, to go fight against the Americans, okay. white folks, right. right? But then he also, at one point in time, had to fight for uh, 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 white folks, you right. understand me, to get his freedom. That was, that's how it was, bro. <laughs> that's how it was. And, and it was a certain point in time where they had one freedom, I believe it was out in Florida. It would say, yeah, right here, it say uh, um, St. Augustine, the common capital of Florida. But what happened was, was the president at that time said that, because they basically gave them an area that was sovereign to say that you free if you're right. over here, because that's right. what they had fought and won for. But mm -hmm. then the president was like, 
we can't just allow there to be a free right. place where black folks can just come to and then they free. Like that shit ain't gonna work. So he yeah. basically said that we not gonna recognize the treaty mm -hmm. that was set that is illegal. It's not in law. Gotcha. So now they had to fight again for their freedom. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And, and and if today you see a lot of migrated darker skinned black people out there in Florida mm -hmm. and a lot of them were soldiers, but that was a different type of energy that was going mm -hmm. on over there. Right. You understand me? Close to Haiti, yeah. right? It's a different warrior bread All that was Caribbean. coming. Yeah, that them was the, and them Native Americans. The Jamaicans revolt, 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 Haiti the same. Yeah. They actually were successful with theirs, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, it it, it was a, a a very wild fighting spirit. Once you do trace root, like we don't know who John Horse family is. Like mm -hmm. we don't. That could be right. your cousin. That's real. And yeah. and he could have been one of the greatest warriors of soldiers of right. all time. And right. you don't even know that's your lineage See, that's, directly to America. I'm glad you brought that up because I'm gonna go research it. That gives us and other creators out there the opportunity to help tell story, rewrite right. stories some more, rewrite history some more. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't tell our stories. Right. You know what I'm saying? Imagine if there was a movie with the production value of 300 oh my God. about 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 Hannibal Barca Hannibal conquering Italy or Rome Europe you know what I'm saying Spain or Shaka Zulu you know Akhenaten. what I'm saying Tinkamenen like so many uh Mansa Musa you, yeah. you feel me so we need these stories told on a big screen because we might have to do it in the metaverse it's real and in the real verse you know what I'm saying yeah. because one 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 thing that I do notice about like I know white people are tired of hearing about white supremacy. We didn't start it, but it's, <laughs> it's media, it's movies, right? There's so many movies that I love that, like I love 300, one of my favorite movies, yeah. right? From a pure cinematic perspective, but the history is so egregious, like how they paint things, right? Oh yeah. First of all, these people, these, these Romans are from the Mediterranean. Why does this guy have an Australian or a British accent? It beats me. Boy. And the Persians was dark skin. And the Persians, right? Iran, so they made the Persians Arabs and Blacks, mm -hmm. right? They, they had them, they represented nothing but lust and gluttony mm -hmm. and partying and that kind of thing, right? They even talked shit about the Arcadians. He said they're nothing but boy lovers. Mm. That's interesting you say that, bro, because the story of 300, right. the real story, y'all can Google this, the, the, the 300 of Thebes, was a powerful unit, right, in Rome. They was fucking shit up because it was paired with couples. Mm. It was 150 couples of men with their lovers. And think about, you got your lover there, you, you ain't, like, nobody yeah. fuck with him and vice versa, you know what I'm saying? So it's like you're, call, you're calling somebody yeah. else a boy lover when you were, this story is about a boy, lo boy I mean, lovers, that's you know what I'm saying? That's what they do we, with we, we gotta, history. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta talk about this shit. We got to put some accurate shit out there. You know what I'm saying? And listen, I like the, I still like the movie. It's one of my favorite movies, but don't do that. Don't play with history like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that's, that's all they do is play with history. Yeah. It's his story, then it's our story. The Last Samurai. You ever see that? Yeah. I love that movie, but it's a drunk white man came in to save the samurai culture. Right. Same thing with the China Wall story that they had, and it was Matt Damon over there saving the China Wall. You know what I'm saying? It's weird. Like white, everybody, it's the white savior complex. Yeah. Like, like this is what people gotta understand, right? That is literally, when we watch movies like that, that is, is white supremacy propaganda. And it's, it's programming. Superman is a character based on his ability to absorb the sun. You understand me? He's extraterrestrial with a, a Muslim name. You understand me? Or African name. What was his name? Khalil. Wow, that was his name. Yeah. Wow. wow. You understand me? Or Jarrell, Khalil, whatever. But well, it, Chris Kringle, wasn't it? No, nah, no. Nah. Oh, that's a real I'm name. I'm talking about like his 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 Krypton name. Okay. You okay. understand me? Interesting. And, and he is a stone cold American white boy, right. chisel chin every single time. Right. right. Blue right. eyes. Blue eyes. Yeah. He is the American symbol. He is literally white supremacy. Right. <laughs> and here's the thing, like I ain't got nothing against white folks because I got some white homies, but. The, the ones that would be the guys wouldn't look like him. Yeah, but, Not but that guy. here's you know the thing. Saying? The issue is the fact that we don't have any of that propaganda for us. So imagine, if you were a young white child and you growing up with that, you always have the image that reinforces your supremacy and your power and your right. dominance yeah, and your for rulership. Sure. For sure. For your whole entire life. Sure. From your cartoons, sure. your movies, sure. from the races, from the non-races, whatever it is, history, 
everything is told to reinforce your self-identity right. as a rightful ruler on this planet right. Earth. Right. We got one movie of Wakanda. Right. You understand me? We, 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 we got real stories. And we don't need to actually listen, make up stories, even thing, though that was though, a great movie. I love that movie, but it's like it's kind of fucked up because now if you Google Black Panther, it's just a movie. Right. You don't see nothing about the, the, the legacy of the Black Panther Party. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, you know, it's just it's just it's interesting. Oh, we, I mean, we give y'all one, but then y'all erase something else from our history. Even, the, even Judas and the Last Messiah was more so about the snitch than it was about. Right. You understand me? Right. Uh, uh, so Fred Hampton. So it's like we have to reshape our own image and tell our own yeah. stories, control our own we narrative. Have to. And that's we the have beauty to. of media. It gives us that power. We have but to. we got to prioritize that because the mental imaging is more important than anything. Mm -hmm. Like you want to talk about, yeah, they go keep making racist things right. in schools right. and not want to teach that history because right. they don't want the guilt of what's associated with their lineage and yeah. their privilege. Here's the thing, man. Like I'm a realist, bro. Like I just accept reality for what it is. Yeah. I'm a very practical person. If I sit next to a white man and be like, let's talk about this, or let's put this out there, and it's egregious aspects of their history, bro, I'm not judging you. Just chill out. We need to get past this so we no, can those move are forward. The, you know see, the people always ask me, do I got white friends? Right? And it's funny, right, and I'll talk about that later, but the, the interesting thing is the white men that I found myself being able to converse with and get along with are the ones that we can have blunt conversations and be real. And, I, me? and see, I have, I have one or two like that, too. And they can tell me, they, like, why would y'all do da, 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 da? I'm like, you're right. You're right. You know what I'm saying? But we can have that back and forth because if you, if you care about somebody and we're all equal, you should be able to criticize me and I criticize you. And it's not racism. You know what I'm saying? One thing that we need to get out of is everything's racist. You know what I'm saying? We need to be us. We need to stop giving our power away. Because every time our feelings is hurt because somebody said something critical to a black person, and we, that's racist, it's like, nah, man, you're giving them too much power. Well, what matters, I think that racism aspect, that's not the part that's the power. Mm -hmm. It's the white supremacist is mm -hmm. the power. And white supremacy and racism are two different things. But here's the thing, you're right. We, we have means to circumnavigate that, right? And as time goes on, that shit is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. It is, you know what I'm saying? Think about how many black millionaires that you know right now. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Like, and one way that we neutralize the playing field is economically, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Because I, I was sitting talking with a, a friend of mine and she's, she lives in LA. She's in the woke crowd, you know what I'm saying? So everything's racist, right? And she was like, I said, what? she was talking about white privilege and she was like, I said, like what? She's like, like a white man could just zoom down the street, da -da -da, PCH, and fast, and, da -da -da -da, and not get a ticket. I said, then I got white privilege, because I do that and get pulled over, and they don't give me tickets because they like my car. You know what I'm saying? It's like you get treated a different way, right? When you but are that's on. That's classism, a, though. It's classism. That's what I'm saying. The race part is a lower level. It's always going to be some kind of division. You know what I'm saying? Now, but the, no, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, the people that are somewhat enlightened, who have access to resources and, you know, have a good level of intellect and can speak and get their messages out there, they're like, I feel like they're making other people who hold on to these silly notions of, of racism and all that shit look stupid and feel stupid. That, those groups are getting smaller and smaller. You know what I'm saying? Listen, my son smacked up a kid at school. Mm -hmm. My son is not violent at all. He knows how to fight, though. He's a good kid. My son's a, you know, he's a, a book guy. Like, he's a, you know, he's, a, he's, he's into, like, coding and shit yeah. like that. You know what I'm saying? Kid said, nigga, a little too liberally. And my son started smacking him up. Bop, bop, bop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's he said, He's like, nigga, say it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say it cool. again. <laughs> say it again, right? He didn't get in trouble. You know what I'm saying? He should have got in trouble because he put hands on a boy that didn't touch him. You know what I'm saying? I t we, we had a conversation about that because I don't ever want him feeling like, like this, this guy is an animal. He think he can call you a name to hurt your feelings or say, you know what I'm saying? Don't let that bother you, you know what I'm saying? Call him a nigga back. <laughs> you know, now you a nigga, you know what I'm saying? Make him, use your intellect to make him feel small. You know what I mean? We had to talk about it, but nonetheless, he didn't even get in trouble because we do live in a, a, a world with rules, a country with rules and laws, right? And I told him, if you was 18, 
and you did that to him, I don't care what he said to you, you're going to jail. You know what I'm saying? So, and my thing is to like keep my boys, keep mine away from anything close to, you know what I'm saying? Looking like, you know, like just to, to mitigate any of those kind of issues that we have with police. You know what I'm saying? Now that does, that does equalize the playing field mm -hmm. in the aspect. We live in a society where it's a couple hundred million white folks, so only 40 something million black people. Right. So the minority in America is based on those, those right. views, right? But when you have a racist child that says something racist specifically to provoke, right? Mm -hmm. And then he gets slapped up. But then we live in a society where the, pro the prevailing narrative is that Listen, we don't want to be racist anymore, right? We got the Black Lives Matter things. We got all these things going on. This is not what's socially acceptable. You will get everybody in trouble, right? Right. So now it puts that fear and the idea that it's taking the power out of racism, basically, right? right? Where like, bro, you can't try to use that as a power. That's that no longer holds weight anymore, right? right, right, right? right. Because we got a more empathetic so-called society. Right. Now I believe that is necessary. Now don't get me wrong. I've slapped up. You understand me? I, so did, I. I, had, I had to do yeah. my slap ups. You but were you ever mad though? No, nah, not in particular. In my situations, I was never mad. I, I'm like, but I got to do this now. I grew up in a very Muslim household. Right. So it's like, I, I've i never been surprised by anything white folks yeah. have done, ever. Right, right, right. Like, never. I'm not in the yeah. news, not nothing. Yeah. So I, ne I don't get angry. I don't right. have that sort of thing towards yeah. white folks. Yeah. You understand me? I really don't. Mm -hmm. Just because I have more of an understanding. Right. I think I've studied white culture and history mm -hmm. more than they have. And I studied our culture and history mm -hmm. more than the average person. Mm -hmm. So I got a different level of understanding. Right. At the same time, I've slapped up people for saying that when I knew I can get away with it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and the key is knowing when I can get away with it. You understand mm -hmm. me? Because I didn't want to go to jail and have a bad night because I slapped right. him because right. he got me angry. Right. But this brings me to a point that I believe racism will be eliminated within 30 years. Mm -hmm. Right? Number one, when you look at shrinking population sizes, uh, when you look at the new cultures or what's being accepted and how these new generations are changing what they construct their empathy towards, racism won't have a place to fit, right? right? And, and, and then at the same time, if by 2025, the amount of deaths are going to surpass the amount of births, mm -hmm. right, in America, right, specifically for white population, and this won't be a mixed population that's going to have to take care of them. You understand mm -hmm. me? You, you right. being racist to your healthcare provider, the people that's yeah, not, facilitating everything yeah. for you won't work out. Right. So that's why racism and white supremacy are different. White supremacy mm -hmm. is a global system mm -hmm. implicated. Mm -hmm. Like when you, we see Superman, that's white supremacy, yeah, not I agree. racism. I agree. That's propaganda that fits into the entire cultural and right. ritual and egregor right. of what we live through. The Roman Catholic Church is the most white supremacist organization ever built on mm -hmm. this planet Earth. You understand me? Right. They literally have a doctrine that say that the Pope is the ruler of the world. Right. You understand it's me? Funny. He owns the it's earth. It's funny because at the Pope, they, they, in their doctrine, he's the most powerful man, right? He sits in a gazebo similar to what uh, Amin Ra was depicted as mm -hmm. sitting in, wearing the same crown as Imhotep or Amin Ra with the north and south Kemet, what they call it Egypt. You know what I'm saying? That thing that he wears, where did he get it from? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The whole thing. So it's like, it's real that interesting. Upper crown. That's yeah. what he wears. And you're not even fly with it, bro. Nah, you're not. Least, like an old woman. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like an old sick white lady. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? So, it's, it's, but here's the thing. It's a history of white men, only dominated, white families, bloodlines, mm -hmm. that can only take that particular position and they control yeah. the theology of yeah. the world, what's yeah. written in the books. They got history that they've but stolen but, that but only it, they can use. I was, Shit is crazy. I was reading about the papacy and the, the Vatican, and they've had a lot of ups and downs, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's real rocky right now because that's a big business, you know what I'm saying? And they've done a lot of business with people that they shouldn't have been doing business with, but it made good business sense, and they need to be bailed out of certain situations. But that is going to fall. Oh yeah, guaranteed. Yeah, that and not that, that long. Now, okay. when when that falls, that is a great representation of the world going into a real shift, mm -hmm. right? People don't like the Pope. It, it, it's a reason why you know all the presidents kiss the hand of the Pope and, and, and got to meet with him and the whole mm -hmm. nine. Right? This is a whole ritual that's been happening for hundreds of years, right. and we think because we live in modern times with technology that those same systems of structure of power don't exist. Mm -hmm. I'm watching this show on Netflix. It's called uh, 
what's it called? Uh, you know, the guy who rewrote the Bible, the King James Version, but he had his son was the um, uh, the guy that they, Caesar. Caligula? No, nah, the guy that they, so that picture of the white Jesus, uh -huh. but the real white Jesus dude, what's his name? Michelangelo? Nah, 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 nah. Michelangelo, I think, was the one who, who uh, painted it. Mm. But it was he did the, Sistine Chapel. the king at the time, or the pope, whichever one, he was the one who issued the painting after his son. Okay. Um, I think they called the Georgios. How am I blanking on this one? I'm having one. <laughs> yeah, the Mike Rashid moment. It's the same yeah. thing. We always talk about this. Yeah, uh, yeah. The fake white that. Jesus dude. But uh -huh. they had. A, they was a family. You understand me? Um, he wasn't really, of course, Jesus, but that long hair character comes from that family name. And it's a show about how that family got in position of power because that family is famous. You understand me? And... When they, it was this one scene where, cause they had to like murder, lie, steal, cheat, do everything they did to maintain and to get into a position of power. And it was a scene where they had Christopher Columbus come meet them. Yeah. And Christopher Columbus came from the Americas. He was like, yo, the report is like, it's the most beautiful place I ever seen. It's like literally paradise. Where? He was talking about America. He was talking, okay. uh, uh, and he said it's the most, beautiful place I've ever seen. You understand me? He mm. say it's absolutely beautiful mm. and the people are peaceful. There's no war, no famine, yeah. no starvation, yeah. nothing. It, you know, what and, he was talking and, about was, was Mesoamerica, was yeah, Mexico. Yeah, because yeah. he was like, he ain't know, he was yeah. lost. Yeah, he lost. <laughs> <laughs> India. I mean, India. Yeah, <laughs> but then he ended, after he said all of that, he said, they're going to be the perfect people to conquer and the make the perfect servants. And it was really giving insight into like their mindset that they didn't, it was no sense of morality or judgment that we're going to try to do good anywhere. It was right. all looking conquer. for conquer and, and finding people to be subservient to mm -hmm. them. And they presented what looks like, you know, today, like a, a darker skinned Hispanic boy. And before them, he said, listen, I have proof. Mm -hmm. And the Hispanic boy basically had to, he was like, he said something about, you know, Jesus Christ being his Lord. He said, see, even they will bow down to the exalted Christ. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Right. And, and that scene to me was powerful. Mm -hmm. so, number one, that they even put that in there. Right. You understand me? But two is that we don't think about the different type of cultures we associated with on a daily basis mm -hmm. and the power structures that we come from. In order to build America, it was a specific mind set that they had to have, right? Yeah morality was not nowhere near part of it right right it was all about how do we engineer mm -hmm. a reality to become the most powerful nation on the planet earth right and any ambition like that right is void of righteousness right so not this country sure. was built on murder and violence yeah. and capitalism and taking advantage of mm -hmm. human stock and people mm -hmm. and here we are 400 years later at the tip of their power Right, even though civilizations only last like 250 years, so this is almost over. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and now they're trying to maintain that power. Mm -hmm. But we don't realize, because some people may think about, oh, well, I'm 20 years old or 30 or 40. They think about life in a short term and span and a perspective. Right. But we're dealing with the people who pass down traditions, institutions mm -hmm. that are hundreds right. of years old right. and thousands of years right. old. So we yeah. think like babies in terms of what's our real issue, because problem, and war we, we fight. We are babies. Uh, considering that we were stripped from the biblical court was pulled apart all right bam grow up you know what i'm saying amongst them with them being our most dominant uh, uh teachers you know what i'm saying we learned everything from them just like when they tell about like how violent we are i'm like bro come on no we're, we're not as violent we're, we're not even near as we're not as violent as and white men who would have grew up in those same conditions and where do we learn violence from from y'all from the most dominant influence over us but no look at the statistic they showed the statistic where if basically white men commit more violence and crimes, right? And versus black men who grew up in adverse conditions mm -hmm. where you should be more susceptible. There should be a yeah. higher amount of black people who commit right. more violence and crimes based on the conditions that we grow up in yeah. that says that, okay, these conditions are classic to say that this person will be a criminal right. or violent, right? Or a murderer. But there's a higher proportionate rate of white men who commit those crimes who don't have that same condition. They don't have the condition. Because it's more natural yeah. for them and I hate, it's not I hate as when natural people, for us. I've even seen sucker blacks. I don't know, what, I'm like, what are you doing? Trying to like prove a point that, well, black people kill each other. And they'll talk about the statistics of black on black crime. I'm like, dummy. 
just anecdotally, I'm thinking like it's got to be like that for every neighborhood, right? Yeah, where, proximity. Where you live at. So I'll, I'll go on the FBI database, look at the stats. The numbers, the percentages are the same. You kill the people you live around. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's not like blacks just got some weird disease that we want to kill each other. Right. You know what I'm saying? Murders committed by blacks happen on blacks. Murder committed by Hispanics happen on Hispanics. Murders committed by whites happen on whites. Why you why you cherry picking data like right. that, making us look bad? I mean, you know we know the Civil War. <laughs> you know what I'm so it, it's interesting. You know what else is interesting, bro? What's interesting is like American and Britain. I mean, what I, we I know go? right. I know a lot of like successful white dudes, and like I say, in the fitness space, cool dude. Like I'm cool with, but it's like the George Floyd thing, COVID. It brought a lot of. You see who people are when shit get rough. Mm-hmm. I guess because none of this shit is rough to me, but. These people are rich dudes that usually live in states where there's no, like, COVID mask mandate. There's none of that kind of shit, right? Out in Midwest, wherever, where nobody cares about the shit. Right. But they got all the issues. They're right. so angry. They're like, why? Bro, you rich. Your life is so good. Y'all don't even wear masks out there. Like, why are you so angry? You know what I'm saying? But, oh, you know what? I'm going to play God's advocate on okay. this one, too. The one thing I can respect about people who get angry about the idea of rights, mm-hmm. that they got a connection to, right, the idea of free or freedom. Right. Having c- control over their body and yeah. their mind, yeah. right? They don't want their freedoms to be infringed encumbered upon. upon or fringed upon by any ruling class. And there's different type of ruling classes. Right. Because then you got people that will follow the classes of the constitutional law. Mm-hmm. And then you got people that want to upend it and create a whole new type of government. Right. And so internally, there's a civil war that's happening in America. Right. Right. I think that we don't get angry enough when mm-hmm. things happen. You understand me? See, like, I when think we, this is a thing, though, bro. We yeah. get angry only at death we, for but, the most part. No, nah, there's here's the thing though. Let's say let's let's I'm gonna use an example of a mass, right? And I feel you, like you know, I'm I am very fortunate. One thing that this this past two years have showed me was I remember there was a time that I was thinking about getting an apartment in Sydney, Australia, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's fly here. Like the Engl- English speaking countries, I have a lot of fun, right? But the weather's good, all of that. But I see like nah, them niggas ain't free at all. You know what I'm saying? And then when you look at like, um, there's only three countries in the world that people have a constitutional right to, to, to have weapons. America, Mexico, and somewhere else in South America. But Mexico and South America is like barely, they barely can, you know what I'm saying? We're like the only country in the world that can walk around with firearms, right? That have a constitutional right, you, you feel me? So it's like, we got different types of freedom here. So I'm with you on that. But these people that I'm talking about, it ain't just that. That they're pissed about too. But they also say shit like, let's say like, and I don't give a fuck about, like I'm not a political dude at all, but they talk about the January 6th insurrection, right? Mm-hmm. And they'll talk about like how it wasn't an insurrection. It was like a glorified field trip. But let it be a George Floyd riot. Oh yeah, nah. You know what I'm saying? They, they draw in parallel. They're like, my nigga, like, Really? Yeah. But but one thing about blacks, that's delusional. Right. They're delusional. One thing about us not tripping about certain things is because, let's say masks, right? I'm like I'm not wearing no fucking mask, right? So I'll do whatever I need. We know how to circumnavigate. We've always had to do it all our lives, so it ain't that big of a deal to us. Yeah. Right. It ain't like we just stuck out. I don't know what to do. But right, that's the problem, though. Mm-hmm. is that we're used to not having our full rights. We're used to not having natural rights. And still having access to shit. Right. And doing shit. That's yeah, not how it's supposed to be. We're not supposed yeah. to get used to those yeah, conditions. That's, that's true. And they don't want to get, they don't want to get used to being treated yeah. like we are. Right, right, right. Like, right, the right. moment they got to feel like a minority in the country, I that's when they're willing to go that's up and That's interesting. I'm glad you said that, bro, because I didn't even think about that perspective. Yeah. But that's like, what look about voting rights. Voting rights... Mm. <laughs> You got to give a people voting rights. Why don't we naturally have them as yeah, people? Yeah. Because they had to create voting right acts for a subset of group of people right. who the Constitution wasn't made for in the first place. Right, right, right. Because they don't consider us to be natural citizens, especially right. under color codes, black, civil right. mortis. We can go into that. But they didn't even but that's how consider it worked. us humans. No, nah, three fifths. Three fifths. That Dred Scott decision was proof yeah. of it. Doesn't, doesn't so it was like, we operate from this place that, we operate from a place of liberty, not freedom. Mm-hmm. You understand me? It's the place where if you got uh, 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 three different types of uh, uh, people, right? If you take a slave and you put him in a cage in a little five by five, small, 
And then one day, Master says, that, listen, I'm going to let you in the field. You keep acting right. You understand me? Don't, don't be out here tripping and, and yelling and like you being tortured in here. I need you to be peaceful while you're in here. Right. I'm going to open the cage and let you in the field. So that slave life, man, that seems like a better, you understand me, yeah. place to be. I get liberty. I get to move around more. Right. So now he gets to go work in the field. Right. Mm -hmm. But the guys in the field is like, bro, man, fuck this shit, man. We want to leave. He's like, bro, I just came from the cage. Y'all yeah. got it good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then you got a runaway that be like, you know what? Fuck all this field shit. I'm about to leave. Right. And I'm about to go find me some freedom. Right. right? So but instead, what if master say, you know what? Instead of just being in the field, I'm going to let y'all roam the rest of the state. Now, hey, before y'all leave, y'all still work for me. I need y'all pay. Mm -hmm. Y'all signing this contract. Y'all still work for me, mm -hmm. but you get more liberty. Right. It's always going to be a small group of them that say, fuck all of this. Mm -hmm. I want true and complete freedom. Right. That's real. I don't want to work for you. I don't want just liberty. I want to yeah. be able to control my mind, my will, my time, everything. Right. And those small group of people are going to be seen crazy like they messing it up for everybody else. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's certain amount of people that have that spirit. Mm -hmm. That it's not about how much liberty you give me. It ain't no comparison from my last place of prison or somebody else's condition. Is that as a human being, I know that my natural human right mm -hmm. is to be able to be unencumbered. Mm -hmm. You understand me? It's to be able to move and have full control right. over my mind and willpower. Right. So it's different people that will accept liberty and some people only accept true freedom. Right. And when we come to slavery, there's no degree to it. If you are a slave at any degree, you're still a slave. Right. So <laughs> there's certain people will only accept true mastery of self, which is true freedom. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And, and that's that place that we have to say, that's the ultimate goal, mm -hmm. that we not stop until we get there. We might, we might celebrate. We got a little further. Right, we got a little further right, on the journey. Right, right. right. Let's stop and get some rest. The rest right. is the celebration. Yeah. But we not celebrate until we get the full fruition of it. And our I people got to have that full vision. But we lack vision to know what the destination is in the first place. Well, we gotta, we have to do what you're doing now. We have to give them the vision, right? Because generally speaking, collectively, people don't know what they want or need, you know? And that's no knock to people. Life is hard, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And people gotta make money, pay the bills, look after their kids, try not to get fired, you know what I'm saying? So they're not thinking about these things. They're thinking about, man, paying rent. But that's the rat race. If, I can, if I can get you to think about these small problems forever, right? So that it's a, it's a brilliant but evil strategy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, the, the mind, right, can't think far and long distance, mm -hmm. right? When you got to think of short-term problems. Right. If I got to think about everything next week, that is as far as my mind will allow me to think. Mm -hmm. It's going to shut off mm -hmm. at a certain point. Right. Right? The mind not even trained to really think about the future in those terms. So you have to train the brain to become a futurist and a visionary. It's not right. a natural thing. Right. That's why every, so, 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 so much, you get so many visionaries inside right. a culture on the planet right. at, a certain time. at a certain time. Otherwise, everybody would be thinking about the future. Yeah. No. So when you got a people that's stuck at, you know, Maslow's pyramid, you got people that's just trying to survive. Mm -hmm. And then you got a visionary telling them, well, let's focus on this technology. Let's focus on building these institutions. Let's focus on doing this. They're like, man, I'm trying to get to next week. I can't right. even start devising strategies and plans to but evaluate that that's still, valuable for it's me. It's still the visionary's obligation to still Absolutely. figure out how to plant that seed, to put that medicine in the ice cream. You know what I'm saying? Because like, I, I feel like, and I'm sure you probably feel the same, I feel like I could be very persuasive to people without mm -hmm. turning them off, without being Absolutely. annoying. You know what I mean? Because with me, I got to practice it every day in my house with my family. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> Getting people to do this and do that. So... And, you know, in my profession, like when I used to be a trainer in the gym, you know, you know, it, these are people who didn't have a lot of extra money. I had to convince them to give me money to help me so I can get them in better shape so mm -hmm. they don't die right. too fast. You know what what was so, one of your tactics? You told me one before. I thought it was key. <laughs> Listen, I, it start with this. My tactics, be excellent at what I'm doing. So I was a trainer. So I'm gonna be in the best shape in the gym and I'm being there getting busy. Like whenever you see me hitting the gym, working out, you see me getting after it. So that's one thing, cause I, I'm, the, I'm my best advertisement. Um, and my clients are my advertisement too. So I, did, I gave 110% with them. I really cared about them. I care about whatever I do. So when I would sit down with people, you know, I have my arsenal, you know, and it showed in my confidence. So I'll take them through uh, the introductory workout, you know what I'm saying? Talk to them first, see where they at, see what, what they're lacking, what they need, whatever, and put them through a workout, make it 
difficult, but not too difficult to where they're broken and don't want to come back. You know what I'm saying? And then I sit down and I talk to them. I talk to them about their health deficiencies, and I talk to them about the 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 the, the, the like cer certain fatalistic things because people accelerate in age fast, mm -hmm. way faster than their normal age. You know what I'm saying? And it don't have to be like that. Yeah. So the the number is arbitrary. It's how you live mm -hmm. and what we see. That's how old you are. You what do you think people number when it comes to health specifically, right? What do you think of people number one impediments that make them unhealthy? I guess, man, society, the, the things, the food like substances that are in, in abundance, right? Because, listen, I eat one meal a day, right? And I got that from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad years ago. You I'm, eat one meal a day? Yeah, I do. And you almost as big as me. <laughs> almost. <I'm>, not, <laughs> not quite, not quite. But nah, but I used to be bigger, so you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ate one meal a day. How much you what? 220. 220. Yeah. I don't like eating that much. I'm not a foodie, you know what I'm saying? Food, people got to change their relationship with food. Food is just a means to an end. It's a source of energy right. for us to move. It's like putting gasoline in your car. It's, that's the energy source for that automobile. The difference is it has a, a mechanical structure. You can't overfill it. Mm -hmm. You can only put enough. With us, we can stretch, you know what I'm saying? And food is, anything can be a drug. And food is the number one drug in America. And it's the number one killer in America. Not mm -hmm. COVID, not none of this other shit. Mm. It's food, you know what I'm saying? So we have a very, this, with this being a capitalistic society, which I'm not mad at, it's just no balance. And it's such an emphasis on industry so they're pushing milk on you, pushing breakfast on you, pushing all of this shit on you, right? Everywhere you go, you see a big, delicious cheeseburger. You checking out, it's snacks right by the checkout. Yeah. All that shit is psychological. Ah, oh, I'll grab that shit, you know what I'm saying? You sitting there bored, you're like, all right, okay, I'll grab that. M&Ms, whatever. So they make it too easy to, to die, to, to, to ex expedite your death. Right. You know what I'm saying? Fast food, so fast death. People got people to gotta understand. This is, I, I say this all the time, man. I have no, is no, this is no knock to doctors. This is no knock to police officers. This is no knock to, to politics, to nobody. But I tell people all the time, nobody cares about you. Mm. The cops don't care. The doctors don't care. The teachers don't care. That's why in my household, education is in my house. We go to school for the social aspect, you know what I'm saying? Connections and all of that shit. But you're getting educated at the crib. You That's know what I'm saying? Fact. I got a music teacher and I got a teacher teacher coming to the house every week. You know what I'm saying? So, and I got, I know what kind of shit that I want my children to be learning anyway. So, and as far as health, bro, the last time I went to the doctor, I forgot what it was, but I did my research already. Boom, boom, boom. So when I got there, I'm telling him, da, 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 and then he's like, um, cause I know what he's going to do. He's going to go look in the book. I said, it's the ba, 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 ba. You know what I'm saying? You got to do that yourself. Right. We got to have knowledge of all of this stuff before we even, we just can't put our lives in their hands. You know what I'm saying? And even with like law enforcement, I got a lot of law enforcement homies and I'd be like, yo, is this cool? Is that cool? Whatever. Because I'm not trusting nobody to keep me safe, but me, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And my family. So we, we, you know, we have to arm ourselves literally and figuratively, but with, you know, guns, of course, but with knowledge, with wisdom, you know what I'm saying? Um, because we just floating around, doing the three meals a day, doing what they suggest. And what they suggest is marketing. That's it's all marketing. truth. To sell you stuff, you right. know what I'm saying? So people need to divorce themselves, in a sense, from the culture here in America. Create your own culture, you know what I'm saying? And... Tap into divorce people. From the culture. Divorce from the culture. Divorce from the culture and tap into people that fuck like keys. Like me. I'm 44 years old. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I started. Uh, I, 44. That's a, it's a years young. We, 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 we new age on this 44 show. 44 years young. You heard my new age philosophy? Nah. nah. All right, so tell me it didn't make sense to you. All right. Have you ever been 50 before in your life? I don't know. No, it's not a trick question. Okay, no, I, 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 you know what I'm like, I don't know how to answer this. You know what I'm Have you ever been 18 or 19 before? Yes. All right. So which one is an old age and which one is a new age? Which one is old age? 50 would be old age. Oh, no. I guess 18 is old because that's back right. in the day. Yeah. You've already experienced mm -hmm. that. Right. 50 would be a new age. New age. I like it. Right? I like it. Once, once you go to 50, that's a I new like, development. I like it. You understand like me? Yes. You've never experienced 50 that's before. Real. That's real. You've never experienced what your body would do, what your mind would do. Yeah. They say 
you don't reach your peak creativity to 40s to 50s. That's interesting. Right? Yeah. Your development as a human being changes throughout decades of your life. You go into new ages, but we don't have a manual to be like, all right, how do I operate this age with this right. body and this yeah. mind? Yeah. We don't realize we need to change and move things. But see, here's the thing, man. There's, there's tactics that one can employ to master self, right? You spoke on that earlier. I was obsessed with understanding myself and mastering myself. Like when I was younger, I love martial art movies kung fu movies mm -hmm. and their doctrine and why they meditated and all of that stuff right them, them men now their situation is a lot different than ours their, their culture their civilization we can't just meditate all day right but them meditating i've seen documentaries of shaolin monks they're doing a demonstration they their clothes will be completely soaked they up in these freezing cold mountains they sit there and meditate to where they're heating their bodies up and you see the steam coming off their clothes they dry their clothes yeah right? I used to do that when I was a child. <laughs> but you was a child then, right? Mm -hmm. There's so many <laughs> incredible things that our minds can do. Yeah. People need to understand that your mind is infinitely powerful. That's right? a fact. We know our smartest thinkers on this planet know more about the cosmos than the human brain. That's right? a fact. So that's it's something to that, man. There is, think about medicine, modern medicine. The number is like 20 or 30 percent of all medicine is placebo, is your brain. You feel me? So you put, they did studies where they put people similar age, similar, similar ailments on one side of the hospital to recover with this beautiful scenery. And then on the half on the other side with a wall. These people recovered dramatically faster. Mm -hmm. It's our mind, bro. You know what I'm saying? And think about like a drug. Think about like, say, psychedelics, right? Psychedelics. Um, you take it in the right settings, it does amazing things for somebody, mm -hmm. right? All it's doing is binding to your serotonin receptors and making you happy. Mm. Something that you, you do, you get that boost of happiness in serotonin and dopamine when you hug somebody you love That's a or fact. somebody smile at you. It's you, you know what I'm saying? So people got to understand how powerful our minds are, right? And think about like someone that's wildly intelligent, like a Michael Eric Dyson, right? I, I admire his intellect and his fluidity and creativity and how he speaks, how eloquent, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what his issues are and everything. I don't care. I just like his, his, his uh, mental sportsmanship, mm -hmm. right? That man spent his life. I read, the first book I read of his, The Michael Larry Dyson Reader, in the forward, he said that I practice being smart like Michael Jackson practiced being excellent at baseball or basketball. I just studied. I read nonstop. Mm-hmm. He changed himself. He created himself to be a genius. You know that, what I'm saying? That right there brings me to a super key. Because yeah. that's, that's how I live. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I, I, I talk to my homies all the time about it. Like, I remember just going through different points in time about the idea of designing myself. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Like, you can literally, if a person wants to write down, like, what, as for their human design, what do they want to improve about themselves? Do you want to become a better speaker, mm -hmm. right? A better thinker, better dresser, more money. Like these are all points of design you can go into. Right. And I knew that growing up in an environment, you go see a young black male for a certain aesthetic and a certain look. If I'm dressed a certain way, I get categorized a certain way because right. people know how to react to the design based on how they program. Right. So I knew that the one way that I could do in order to make myself better was to always have an upper hand where people are judging me one way, but I'm actually way above it, mm -hmm. right? So I would study things outside the normal realm, right. right? Whether I'm studying some ontological mathematics or some physics or some engineering, I'm studying specifically so that my brain is always outside the box, right? That mm -hmm. people are looking at my design as. Mm -hmm. So it was like, for me, I used to have gaps in my intelligence where sometimes I feel like, you know, my philosophy of bullshit is when you say something and do something with no regard to whether it's true or false, mm -hmm. right? So if I would say a word and I didn't understand it, or if I would say something and I didn't know if it was true or false, I'm bullshitting. If I'm doing something and I don't know if it's real, I'm bullshitting. Yeah. So it helped me check myself because I never wanted to do anything that was bullshit because one person right. caught me out on it before and I'm like- It don't feel good. It wasn't my intent, but he, right. they was right. Yeah. So it is like, that's when I start reading the dictionary. I start taking courses. I took a course on learning how to learn. You understand me? I remember I worked bro, in a job. That's I took, real, bro. That, I took, listen, <laughs> I, I was explaining to somebody the other day. I did a, a podcast with this sister named, um, I forgot, I'm sorry, I forgot. But anyway, I was telling her how when I was younger and I, you know, I studied, I, I've always been yeah. like, like geared towards learning, right? And becoming wiser. 
But I remember somebody asked me what something meant, what a word meant. Mm -hmm. And I, I was explaining what it meant, like, like giving an example. But that's not a definition of that word. It's not. So that made me start defining every word. Like when I, if I'm studying, if I can't say what this word means, define this word, I look it up. Yeah, same. Even the, like yeah. a lot of people don't know what the means. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like, it really stretches your ceiling of intelligence. And like you said, you're designing yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what people gotta understand. Like I design myself, me personally, to be the oak, that guy mm -hmm. in my world. You know what I'm yeah. saying? With my woman or women or my children, my business partners, I want everybody to be, I want to be the MVP. You know what I'm saying? So I, I qualify myself to do that with a lot of fucking work. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And people will see us now, you know, he's, he's living a life. Like, bro, I work my ass off. Yeah. Last night, I woke up at four in the morning yesterday because I get up early. Pillar of manhood work. Right? Woke up four in the morning. That The morning is when I have time for me to meditate, to do nothing if I want, to read, all of that stuff, stuff that's not pertaining to like work and shit like that. And then at night, after my, my day out in the office, podcasting, all of this stuff, I come home, I'm tired as hell. But I'm uh, doing my research on NFTs, uh, figuring out this roadmap stuff. Yeah. Um, I hired another artist last night. We're talking, yada, yada, yada. Like, I was up till three in the morning. I was almost up 24 hours, you know what I'm saying? And fuck it, I love it. That's, I, I don't need to sleep like right. most people. You know what I'm saying? So that shit, we got to work like young men. Like a lot do of my- Do you start with, i cut your wisdom. Do yeah. you start with the end in mind the when end? you go for a goal? Excuse me? Do you start with the end in mind when you go for a goal? Go for a goal? Yeah. Uh, nah, not an end. So I, 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 I strive for like, I want to make, like, all right, so my new um, venture right now is the NFT space, right? right. And I just want to make it epic and legendary, like for real, I want to disrupt this whole game. Cause there's one disruptor right now that I see what he's doing, but it's to me, it's, it's a curl. So would that be the end? No. Huh? That's the end. For him? No, for you. Nah, cause Did I don't you? know what the end is. Well, I mean, so the idea of having a vision and then going to attacking it, right? The end in mind is the sense of, cause if you're talking about designing yourself, right? And design creates interaction, reaction, right? Mm. So let's say if I want to be the most prolific in this space, the greatest thought leader in this space, right? right? And they say, okay, what do all I have to do in order for, not for me to see myself, but for the world to see me as such, right? right? What, 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 what accreditations I got to have, what kind of content, what type of mm -hmm. teaching, what metrics I need to be, mm -hmm. all of those things. So I'm right. gonna think of the end in mind first, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna build out everything because the bigger you make this go, the larger the gap is between where you are now and to your point of getting there. Right. So the larger you create the vision is the bigger journey you got to right. go on there to that destination. Right. All right. But the way you go about it, whether your intelligence and your strategy is go determine how fast you get there, mm -hmm. right? And how effective you are at getting there in a quicker amount of time. So I think about the end in mind as far as what is the vision. Now that vision can be revisioned. You can always have a revision. A lot of people don't do that. Take that key. Have a revision. Mm -hmm. But I'm always thinking like, all right, this is what I need to do. I got to put in this amount of study. I got to mm -hmm. study right uh, 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 across the board, other people in the way that they defining it. I got to mm -hmm. study the absence and the ignorance on it. I got to study the different concept, different right. ways. My, my thing is never getting stuck in my way of thinking. Oh, for sure. That's, that's a, if, if, if there was a fear of mine, I, I hate the fact that if I'm studying something, you can get stuck in your perspective. Right. And sometimes you can think your perspective is so broad that it's enough. Right. But I'm always looking to challenge myself for outside perspective right. so that I'm not missing anything. Yeah, that's interesting you said that, Keys. I don't have that, right? I am so, like, I, I'm used to winning, right? And, but my winning takes a lot of grit and a lot of work, right? I just don't want to lose. So my position, like, it is what it is. I can show you throwback pictures of me when I was living in a, living a different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I used out living the life at the top of the food chain. You know, that can't last forever. So I went through that and then got right back up. Positive, doing all legal things, right? Things that I'm proud to do, feel good about. Top of the food chain. I have an ego, a healthy ego, so I don't want to fall. So I listen. You know what I'm saying? 
to make sure I'm getting wisdom and information. I don't, I'm not going to be a, a blockbuster to Netflix. Is it fear, you know? though? Uh, is it fear? I don't know if it's fear. It's just I have a, a heavy amount of motivation to not be a loser and to make my children proud, make my parents proud, make my woman proud. You know, my the people in my world is who I'm most concerned with, right? How they view me, right? And I do care about how people view me. Um, and just inadvertently, if I do a good job with them, everybody see me doing a good job, period. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing a good job. Even like people that patronize any of my businesses, right? I want to give them excellent service. Mm -hmm. That means everything to me, you know? When I had my gym in Miami, I remember I was in uh, Australia and uh, doing a meet and greet, this, this expo, and there was people coming up to me that had went to the gym and I said, look, your staff was, was so pleasant. It was so cool. And that felt so good because I used to go in there and I used to tell people, like, we had a little meeting. I was like, look, the gym is like a second home to a lot of people. It's a sanctuary. It's very easy for you to be the reason that this lady or that guy had a good day today, a nice day. A compliment, just being nice, whatever, right? So, and then when they see me, that, I wasn't saying that for, like, business reasons. I was saying that because this is my gym. I don't want these people to feel comfortable in here. Is and that they, part of you, your nature of being protective? Maybe it is. But I, I also, listen, I've, I've been a person who've had not before. Um, so, and a person that made money underground. So when I got into like business, I'm like, yo, I appreciate it. Even when I was a trainer making $50 an hour, I appreciate, if you gave me $25, I'm going a, I'm to a do a hell of a job for you. Okay. Cause I appreciate you so giving gratitude. I appreciate so. you giving me this so i want to over deliver for you and that's people say that's ego i think that's my ego like i want to be looked at as like yo this dude is thorough you know what i'm saying so that's it bro you know think about i think a lot of this shit probably come from my childhood um listen when i was a kid i was a skinny kid you know what i'm saying um and you know to an extent i remember my mother's husband used to beat her right and i remember feeling so helpless and powerless right and like, I can't do nothing, you know? And I never ever wanted to feel any of that ever again. So I, I developed, I designed myself to be powerful, to be strong. Physically, yeah, but mentally, spiritually, financially, everything, you know what I'm saying? So that, that, gives, that gives me a lot of fucking confidence and I just move a certain way because of that. That, 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 that brings me to an interesting point because I do want to get back into health a little more just to get people more tips, but I do want to mm -hmm. get into this part of a lot of things we do as men is to protect that child that was once unprotected. Right. You understand me? The, the, the vulnerability within ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. You understand me? Um, and we don't realize that that child may get a bigger form, may get a bigger body, different right. position, but that child is still trying to protect himself from that one point where he felt the most vulnerable in life. Right. Right. And some people learn how to harness that in a healthy way. And in some people, it becomes a detriment to their life because mm -hmm. they never felt like that child was ever able to be taken care of. Right. You understand me? And so it's important to be able to go back into your past, mm -hmm. right? And know the reasons why you do everything. Because right. not everybody understands themselves. That's true. Right? It was yeah. Noble Drew Alou who said something to the effect, study, 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 then go study some more. And then when you don't know what else to study, go study yourself. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And I think that that's key because if a lot of men just sit down and you take a overview of your life, you can find the reasons you may treat other people right or other people wrong, mm -hmm. right? And I think that that's key. If you find why you treat other people right, you can double down on it and even learn how to treat right. people even better, right. right? Because you may create a standard for treating people right because, well, based on what I went through, this is the best way to treat people. Right. But that might be a ceiling because you're like, well, I'm treating people good enough based on what I went through. Right. right? <laughs> so you may treat people better. Yeah. yeah. Then you treat people wrong and say, well, that's what people desire. I've been through the same thing. Life is hard. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So once you can go back and look at that child in your past and see how they was affected mm -hmm. emotionally, spiritually, physically, mm -hmm. right? I, I have all my students go through an ACEs test, that adverse childhood experience, because a lot of the trauma stopped them from learning and development because they don't have enough self-love to get to that next level. They don't care enough about yeah, themselves. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, once you have that, 
you can understand why you walk past another black man and you'd be like, what the fuck is he looking at? Or just people, period. Yeah. Like, I catch myself from doing that. Like, right. why am I tripping off the fact that they looking? I came yeah. outside fly. Yeah. You know, I wear a crown every day. I got to be a, a specimen. Yeah. yeah. So once you learn how to check yourself, I think so many problems become eliminated because right. that's the thesis of knowledge of self. Mm -hmm. People think knowledge of self is like getting cosmic consciousness about the world. Yeah, history. Nah, so, yeah. knowledge of self is literally a study of self, self of who right. you are. Right. The t like, you want to go back thousand years, but you ain't went back in the last 10 years of your own life. That's real. You understand bro. me? That's and real. figuring out who you are, and that would determine Man, how I'm you treat you, yourself. I'm glad you're saying that because I say this to people all the time, right? So we, you know, especially to, to our people, we don't deal with knowledge itself. Mm -mm. We just deal with the group collective issues. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But if we dealt with ourselves collectively, we would rise. It'd be amazing. You people. feel me? So, but, but nobody, I, did, I, put, I put up a video one time. It's called Jihad. It's, it's, it's like, the, my, the whole notion of it is like, man, it's so weird that, because I know people, right, that be on the activist kick, but be trying to borrow money from you. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. You know, and I'm like, I, I love your energy. I love what you're trying to do, but yo, you need to get yourself together. You know what I'm saying? Man, that's key. And, and, and it's like, you know, um, everybody has, I'm talking about the general public, man, like, because I see people really jumping out the window on social media for this issue and that issue. People who lives and they, they need, <laughs> they need resources, but they're, they're ostracizing themselves. They're, whatever else is happening because of their beliefs or what they think they know about certain things. I'm like, yo, fix yourself. You know what I'm saying? We got, like, I can, somebody brought somebody up the other day, somebody I didn't really care about, right? Because they did X, Y, Z in the past. And I started talking about it. I'm like, but I did X, Y, Z, A, B, C. So what am I talking about? Let me get off of that. My bad, y'all. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if I ain't 100%, million percent clean, let me keep my mouth closed when I'm talking about this, that, this person, yeah. that person, or this issue, or that issue, you know, or let me just understand the shit better. You know what I'm saying? A lot of things that people talk about, they don't really even understand the issue. You know what I'm saying? So, and again, they're now they're all worked up about this thing that probably don't even affect their life. Mm -hmm. But it's things in your life that affects you. You don't like your job. Let's figure it out. Let's talk about it. Bro, I sit with a lot of people that I know, and even people on social media sometimes that, that get through that this sucks or that, and I'm like, all right, let's figure this out. You know what I'm saying? Right. I ain't no therapist or nothing, but I have a lot of insight on life, and I've been through a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm older than a motherfucker, <laughs> or young. You know what I'm saying? New, right? So I'm new. You just at a new age. New age. Off. So I, I'm at a new age, and I've experienced many ages. I mean, how good that feel? It feel great, bro. Right? Thank you for that. Bro. <laughs> Thank you for that. But um, but yeah. So it's like, and that's what I love. Learn. I, I learn from you every time we talk. Likewise. And I'm way older than you. You know what I'm saying? But that should be a testament to Wait, people to, to understand, like, listen, I don't know, I don't know anything. I always, I'm a baby. I don't That's know the much. beauty of it. I don't know anything, but I, I'm, I'm willing to learn. And After I respect, you know everything, the only thing left to do is die. Is to die. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You've, you've reached that max right. point where it's, there's nothing it's else so, to do in life. It's so fun to learn. Like, it's all, I remember a sister, um, Tiffany Muhammad, we still good friends, went in college, we was in different states, but we, we liked each other. And I respected her so much that whenever we, like she was uh, in school to be a, an attorney, right? So I'd be studying shit about her stuff yeah. for the next time we talk, I have okay. more shit to talk yeah. about, you know what I'm saying? That's game. That's, that's <laughs> for real, that's where, like, that's where our young men should be, our heads should be. You know well, let's saying? talk about women for a second. Let's then. do it, let's do it. You understand me? Now, we, live, we, we currently got a culture, right? Right. Where the young cats is talking about push a pee. Okay. The other cats is talking about high level manhood. Okay. You understand me? Now this push a pee is an interesting conversation coming from Oakland. Okay. You understand me? I, I get it. Right. Right. What Keep does it, it mean? Well, it, it has multiple meanings. You you ask the, the Houston players, you understand me? It's different than when the Oakland players, right? Okay. Uh, some of it can be connected central to the pimp scene, some okay. connected to the player scene, right? And it's getting back to the uh, to the origins of this whole connection of keeping it player and right. or keeping it Mac, you understand keeping me? Keeping it pimping. Keeping it pimping. Mm. But that means different to different cultures and different places, even right. in, in America, right? right? But it's more so, I would say, this notion about it, right? 
We got a, a society of men who get jealous around other men when they're around women that are more attracted to them, right? And unfortunately on social media, it gave people a false confidence of what right. their value was, mm -hmm. right? Because by yourself, you can shine, right? Right. But sometimes it's artificial light next to somebody else who got a real sun, right? You know what I'm talking about? Right. Right. Where they got that it factor. But keeping it P is like keeping it player. Right. You understand me? Like, nah, we all in this game playing. We not yeah. against each other. This is a mm -hmm. collaboration of all of us moving. Right. But at the at the, the thesis of it, you gotta have principles. You yeah. understand me? For a woman, keeping it player is, is uh, bringing a man peace, not problems. Correct. You understand me? For a man, keeping it player is is, is coming in with a uh, protection and positivity to that woman. Correct. You understand me? And, and principles. The, 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 the biggest gift that we can provide to our women is uh, making them feel safe allowing them to let their hair down oh and God. activate their full femininity oh you know what I'm saying? a woman will will submit to a man that gives her that protection and gives her that peace and security correct a hundred percent a lot of, there's a lot of guys I man i run into a lot of people man and some people got money and we talked about this already they only have money yeah so they're broke they're and poor. that money thing is not a it's not a measurement. It's not a measure. It never was, but no. specifically now it has lo lost even more value because money is so got, easy to get. Exactly. You understand so me? It's not, a, it's not a measure. Fellas, it's not a measure. Listen, I have, uh, I was going back and forth with Fresh and Fit, and they was under this notion that, you know, it's just about money. I'm like, bro, like a woman to leave a man if this dude got money. I'm like, bro, stop it. That ain't I even have, true. I ha it's, listen, I have close friends who maybe they, just hit, they didn't hit their stride with business, but they still have good jobs, decent jobs, beautiful wives, dimes. They work too. Yeah. And their men are stand-up men, solid men. They're not going nowhere. Yeah. Fuck your money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Most men so, in the world ain't rich, but these women, yeah, it's listen, not, man. It's not. It's, it's a not. new culture of you trying to get the baddie on Instagram, you understand me? And she's marketing herself specifically for a rich man. You understand me? Market. That's different, right? But the average woman that's that's walking around, she's available. And there, there, there it's like I'm I'm thinking of people very specific and close to me that's dope set up, yeah, work, job, whatever, family, nice house, bills paid, and they're good. You know what I'm saying? It's a what people gotta understand, man. Like you're right. It's it's a very small percentage of people who have this extraordinary, extraordinary right. amount of wealth. You know. And that not... actually wants to be with the people that want to be with them. Right. And that's not the end all to anything. There's but, plenty of people with a lot of money that's miserable. That's and, sad. And, and you know I mean? dangerous for women even more because they start picking based on the metrics. Right. So they be with terrible people because they got a little money. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And the whole time you never checked his character or principles right. and understand this. Was, this a, was this a righteous man in the first yeah. place? What and, does he submit to? Any woman have to learn what a man submits to. Right, and, and for the fellow out there with bread, you've been having bread for a long time. Some of y'all have always had money, so you've never developed, I'm not saying for all, but character. Typically, you haven't developed like character, things, uh, uh, swag, or you know how to speak to people properly. You never had to work hard for anything. So you're you're lacking a lot of a lot of skills. Right. So, so they use material substance to make up for right. the lack of or immaterial substance. Yeah. So the immaterial is it holds way more weight. Yeah. It does. And you may someone can look at it as impractical, right? And not rational for a woman to hold more weight on the immaterial, my feelings, versus this man can really provide. This this is wildly important, providing. But there's other things to it as well. But you will be depressed being provided for because you can't, if, if, um, but that's the whole thing. It's like, you know, people joke about the, do you want to cry in a Honda or a Bentley, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and people are like, well, I, I don't want to be sad at all, Thank right? You. That's yeah. the, why, why would the depression aspect be a selling point for me being with you and right. picking your lifestyle? Right. That's already a, a red flag, red if you flag, will. I would never tell a woman like, listen, you may be depressed with me, but it's better than being depressed over there on yeah. that scene. <laughs> that don't make no sense. You know or, how sad uh, that is? You get cheated on by a broke nigga. <laughs> yeah, like, that's, that's yeah. not a selling point uh, 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 of why you pick a mate. You right. understand me? And we got to get but back to not, them principles. Here's the thing. This is, it's crazy. We got to, like, preface it, but we do because motherfuckers ain't got their shit together nowadays. Yeah. And men forgot how to be men. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So here's the thing. 
fellas. <laughs> Talk to him. I got this from my spiritual father, yes, the sir. Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and he did a speech a long time ago, and he was addressing young men. And I'm paraphrasing, but he said something to the effects that you <laughs> do not deserve the pleasures of a woman's breast mm. if you don't, you can't take care of her. You mm. know what I'm saying? Say that again, man. You you do not deserve you don't deserve the pleasures of a woman's breast if you can't take care of her. Come on. Listen, women are the vessels to life, right? This weird shift in society to where we're talking to our women crazy, putting them down. Well, men do this and built that. Like, suckers talk like that. Yeah. Suckers trying to, the woman must, in your view, this woman, these women are bigger than you. So you're trying to chop them down by insulting them and talking about what, it wasn't even you, it was some guys did right. this. You, you didn't do anything, right? So it's like, have some respect, you know what I mean? And that's often a lack of emotional intelligence. Bro, that, yeah. Like, it, it's a validation of a machismo and hyper-masculinity, and that because I'm the dominant physical force, the woman has to be subservient and, and, and do whatever the hell I tell her to do, not question and not have a mind of her own at all. Yeah. And it's a weakness, though, because, number one, that's not something that's rooted in our natural culture, right? Right. In yeah. our natural timeline as human beings on this planet Earth. You go to Egypt, and then you find times where women were rulers and men were rulers, right? right. Throughout that chemist society. Right. So we know for a fact we've been able to get along with our women. Yeah. You understand yeah. me? Like, it's a difference when you go into Roman culture or Greek culture, mm -hmm. and you see the subservience where women do not have any dominant positions with so ever in a society mm -hmm. and their value is completely measured on the man that they with or their ability to produce a son, right. a male heir. Right. Like that's their value yeah. point. Yeah. But that was never a point in our culture that where nah. we said, listen, if sis can't produce a boy from it, she ain't got no value. We, right. You won't find that anywhere because nah. we never thought, that's silly, it's stupid. Yeah. You understand me? Women have always had value. Queen Sheba, we can go, I mean, Listen, bro. We, we honor the laws of truth, order, and justice. You gotta tell me, bro. I, balance. I, I exalt women. I, I, you know, it's funny because these cats was calling me a simp. Right? Yeah. And I'm like, first of all, that shit sound disrespectful. Yeah. What you talking about? Like, yeah. would you say it to my face? You know what I'm mm. saying? It's interesting. Y'all attacking me with these words. You would never say it to my right. face, right? And I'm not trying to impress men. Yeah. I'm not trying to, I don't care what y'all think. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want to spend the rest of my life with my woman, mm. you know what I'm saying? Or my women. So not the homies, you know what I'm saying? So You say it's your women. Yeah. Okay, we get into that. In a okay, second. yeah, yeah. So <laughs> uh, you know, that's my culture, bro. So and I live in my truth, mm -hmm. you know. And I say my women, like, I do live a, a, a polygamy lifestyle, mm -hmm. you know. Um that is this work. That's the ability to I know love. a lot of people gonna have questions. Uh, yeah. Huh? How does it work? So Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I talk about it. Let's say and we talked a little bit about this off camera already, right? Polygamy has been a hot topic, mm -hmm. right? And before we get into your situation, right? Uh, in the general, I seen a, um, a funny videos on social media. And I knew the video was fake already. Uh, Brother Shaka Bars had posted it. Uh -huh. And there's this girl saying that uh, she would hurt three husbands. And there was mm -hmm. these dudes behind her in Walmart, right? right? And I, 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 I commented, you understand me? I, I call BS, right? right. So people was going crazy. You understand me? How come you would say that? I thought you was killing the boxes. I thought men and women to do this, that, and the third. And I'm not about to argue with people on yeah, the internet. Yeah, you understand me? Yeah. You like it or you don't, mm -hmm. right? What's the difference, in your opinion, between a woman having three men and a man having three women? All right, so. Or I, two, but just you to speak. Number. I can speak anecdotally. I can speak on history as well. Anecdotally, if a woman needs, feel like she needs more than one man, she's not being fulfilled by either of those men, mm. right? Because, you know, it, it's just real. So if I, I heard to get three, the two couldn't do the job. They're not doing the job. All three of them not doing the job. So they're, they're lacking somewhere, you know? So. But what if women say the same argument about a man and a woman? It's different, though. It's different. We could go into our programming, right? What is our, what is every animal every insect every bird every human every creature on this planet what is the the dominant what is the common denominator what are we all trying to do procreate exactly right so you know you gotta think there was a time when there would be like one human per square mile right we didn't like 
our parents didn't teach us like, listen, we, we need to fill the earth with people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So go yeah. out there and nah, we just, our hormones start acting a certain way at certain ages. We feel in this way. And men would hunt women to, to have sex with them to try to, because it wasn't civilized back then. It was like, like animals do the same shit. You know what I'm saying? We were animals at some, a certain point. But you got to think about us being quote unquote civilized as humans. It ain't that long as far as we've been on this planet as humans for way longer. So people have been living very kind of reckless and, and just instinctual longer than we've had rules, you know what I'm saying? I mean, just think, women here barely are able to vote like, what, 100 years ago, you know what I'm saying? And other humans were considered cattle. So, you know, we, we, we've come a long way, but we, we ain't got that far, you know what I'm saying? So our programming is still set a certain way. So if a man is to, and I hate to like say it like this, because I don't want people thinking that I'm being chauvinistic or misog misogynist or anything like that, because I love women and I respect women, but you know, back then, man, a man would impregnate a woman and then he's off to the next to impregnate another one. He would try to keep planting his seeds, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, the woman can't get pregnant for nine months. Mm -hmm. She had no reason to go off and find another, you know, because, you know, we have, we, we, we get pleasure out of this now. And most people, when most people are having sex, they don't even want a kid, but that doesn't take away your natural desires, you know what I'm saying? And men, they've done studies on this, bro. Like, they've studied men, like, what turns men on, right? And they would show, like, a sex scene on the screen, right? They would show these men the same thing every day, right? And then their level of erection would not be as strong as time went on. But then they would throw in some novelty, it's back up here. You know what I'm saying? So it showed that we are programmed to desire novelty, to desire different. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know... I know me, I like women, I love women, and I do want to experience different women. It's their companionship, you know what I'm saying? Like, I love it. Like, I love yeah. just hanging out, vibing with women, you know what I'm saying? And it's another weird thing that I got, like, when I'm, I'm, I'm talking to a woman and, you know, and I, she's been through some fucked up shit and experienced that and this, I want to, like, protect her. I want to, like, show her, like, uh, real men don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Real men don't yell at y'all. Real men don't, whatever, you know what I'm saying? I want to, like, be an example to them. So, um, yeah. Would you recommend your lifestyle for others? No. I recommend my lifestyle for men that can handle it. You know what I'm saying? And How would I, you qualify men that can handle multiple partners? Yeah, so um, to have, like, a, a high level of emotional intelligence and EQ and be able to be the dominant factor in your house to where emotions are here, everybody getting crazy, like you could bring it right back down and level everything out, right? Be able to guide them properly, protect them properly, uh, provide whatever they need equally, you know what I'm saying, and properly, and just really love them and really give them love and never lie, being honest and truthful. That is the biggest gift, the truthful part that these women want, man, especially our women. Our women are so sick of being lied to, bro. Mm -hmm. They're so worn down, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, when people start hearing me talk about my lifestyle and podcasts and stuff like that, a lot of women hit me up. And they're talking about their relationships, and I'm trying to, like, help them, give them advice. And they be like, they be like, how'd you get to where you at doing this? I'm like, this is just what I wanted to do, how I wanted to live. So I knew I had to qualify myself, overly qualify myself to be able to handle that. So i like, would you ever be like that with your man? She was like, I mean maybe back in the day, but he lies so much, I hate him. They be hating they dudes mm. for, from so much lies, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, on the flip side, dudes have, a lot of dudes have a, a, a strong desire for multiple women. Mm -hmm. It's not that we all evil, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like programming. So it's like, let me talk about this. Like, yo, babe, I love you, but I really want to experience her too. I love her too, I'm feeling her, you know what I'm saying? It's not abnormal for one to love multiple people. That can happen, you know what I'm saying? If you open so, yourself up to that. When it comes to, let's say, is there a, a time period and you think that a man should be with a woman before he opens up the opportunity for another woman to be a part of that sanctum? It totally depends on that man and that woman. You know where they're at. Everybody's so different, right. you know what I'm saying? Because like historically, right, if you go to different cultures, right, they would, 
the, the consideration for, you know, multiple partners will be based on different needs, right? Mm -hmm. um, one be nation building, right? right? So number one, nation building is looking like expanding an empire and right. growth right. and bringing in more helpers, helpmates, yeah, right, to help sure. that empire or the expansion right. happen right. under one roof, under one name, right. more specifically one name, mm -hmm. right? that everybody is working for this name. Right. And then, you know, specifically having the ability to provide. Some men's vision is so small, they shouldn't be with no woman. You ain't got no right. vision. Right. No vision, it means no woman, right? right? right. A big vision, you need a woman, right? And then, you know, I let everybody else qualify anything beyond that. Mm -hmm. That's real. You understand me? Like a woman is an incubator, you feel me? It's like trying to get a woman pregnant and you ain't got sperm. You know think about this in a real practical sense. Think about, you know, days of old when, you know, powerful men of men of great stature had concubines, right? They were literally populating the city with their seed, right? A man who is a peasant or broke doesn't deserve to be having kids because his ch children will be a burden to society. Mm. Not all the time, but most of the time, right? He's not, he doesn't have the means to provide uh, the proper tools to raise this child properly, you know, whereas a powerful man who has resources does, right? So you got, I kind of look at it like that too, you know, it's not for everybody. No, nah, you know, my, my take would be that men specifically in our culture have to make righteousness their number one goal. You understand me? Mm -hmm. Like that consistent battle you go on a daily basis to make sure that you morally aligned you understand me, and, and you moving with, with upward purpose, you understand me? And that has to be first because intent matters, right? right? And most people never check their intent for what they do, right. right? And without checking your intentions, you may be doing something that in another situation is good, right. but because you're doing it with the wrong intentions, the turnout is going to be bad, right? right. you understand me? And when a person lays down and has sex, sex is a contract. It's a contract that this can possibly result in us having a baby. Correct. The baby becomes an even bigger binding contract right. that this is now a permanent relationship for right. the rest of your life. Right. Whether it is estranged or whether it is healthy, mm -hmm. whether you are bonded together or not, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So each time you lay down and have sex with another person, you are literally agreeing to what can happen, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, when, 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 when people try to off put that responsibility of what happens afterwards, regardless of what situation created it. Right. If you didn't do everything to avoid it or you didn't go in there with the communication and say that, listen, you know we're going to have sex, right? So, and, and who wants to have this conversation, right? right. But Because human beings are not that mature. Right. But communication is the most mature thing you can do in right. understanding. That's a fact. But if you lay down... You understand me? Whatever happens after that is your responsibility in totality. Right. You understand me? And, and if we look at Western sex practices, Eastern sex practices, these are completely different, mm -hmm. right? Like the idea, even in the hood or even in hip hop in our culture is to not look at women as real women. Look at them more so as an objectified right. tool, yeah. something that you use, you get your disrespect. issue off and then you move. So that objectification doesn't even allow us to start the conversation it's, it's, it's righteously. Really, it's really interesting. I'm gonna tell you something that bothers me, bro. Like how, let's talk about music, right? And I, yeah. love, I love rap music. Like I'm, I'm a hip hop head, but let's talk about the disrespect that is demonstrated towards our women. That's okay. It's accepted, it's allowed. Mm -hmm. Let somebody say something about another protected group, mm -hmm. whether it be transgender, LBGT, whatever, Jewish, whatever. All hell breaks loose. Yeah. Cancel that man. You know what I'm saying? But all day, I could fuck this bitch and this bitch better have this and da, da, da. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, we we definitely need a realignment. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because now we've made our women disrespect themselves in a form of freedom and expression. Yeah, yeah. And say, well, my sexual feel like, what? Yeah. It's not okay. You yeah. know what I mean? So, and it's like, you, you, you're trying to put a battery in their back, like, Go say that shit. Be proud. Like, of what? You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants a woman that speaks like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it'd be a lot of lame, sorry niggas that'll accept that because that woman could take care of him. But what kind of imbalance is that? You know what I'm saying? There so, ain't no balance. There's no balance. But back to my situation, I just want to be clear about it. It's like, 
Listen, I live, I live a life of service and, and love. Love guides my actions, right? So when I'm entering a relationship with someone, you know, we talk about everything and like my woman, my women, I have two women in my life. Their best interest to me is higher than mine. You know what I'm saying? I, I appreciate them and I respect them. I appreciate them for giving themselves to me and I don't take that for granted. You know what I'm saying? So what people might look at is like, damn, freedom or whatever, they're letting him do this. Or, like, nah, they appreciate me and I appreciate them. It's reciprocated, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, if anybody that spent time with us, hang out with us, they're like, yo, y'all got such a dope vibe. You know what I'm saying? We always get that, always, you know what I'm saying? And we have good fun. Every time we hang out, we go out, we do stuff, whatever, because we, we talk about everything, right? It's a, it's a real loving relationship, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, the literal definition of polygamy is like, it's acknowledging that one can be in love with more than one person. It's not, that's not some weird thing, you know what I mean? But people limit, they put a, a governor on that form of expression because this is a Eurocentric type of uh, uh, setup that we live, live under, which it wasn't like this in other places of the world. In other places of the world where polygamy is normal, they don't have a high divorce rate like we have here. You know what I'm saying? You forcing people together just one and one. <laughs> Instead of getting divorced, they get married again. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, you, it's like that energy is dispersed. That's you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that energy is dispersed. But, but I think this, like, if I have to use myself as an example, and then I know other brothers that have multiple wives, um, very similar. Like, you have to be a tempered person with some wisdom, with some experience in life um, to be able to control that and handle it and keep peace and order. You know what I'm saying? Because that would be chaos yeah. if it was just willy-nilly, just everybody was doing whatever. I, I also don't think it would work in a, in, with our generation and the culture that we have, I don't think it works. Mm -hmm. We got this, the, the, so I'll give you, before we get out of here, I want to put this on record because I'm going to do a whole breakdown of our population and family dynamics. Mm. In a draconian measurement of population control, right. one of the things that they chiefly say is educate the women, mm -hmm. right? right? Now, the reason that they say this is because when women get educated, mm. they no longer want those regular natural roles that they right. play inside a household, right. taking care of a family, yeah. helping, assisting a man, right, being a helpmate. Now they want the independent status. The career becomes the new family aspiration mm -hmm. in place, right? Which slows down the amount of births they get, increase in abortions, right? Less families being produced in mm -hmm. that particular sense, mm -hmm. right? And so, and, and this is something that you can go study right now on uh, uh, different uh, measurements that they've used to try to slow down population growth, right? In different places across the world, particularly in Africa, because mm -hmm. Africa, has the most fertile, right, continent on the planet. Right. So if we look at our culture, right, our culture, second in abortions, right, very high rate, um, high in divorce, you understand me, very high rate. We got a lot of baby mamas and baby fathers out here and a lot of dysfunctional families, mm -hmm. right, very high rate. Right. So we're not an e exemplar society to look at right. that nobody on the planet should be like, we're going to do it like black right. people in America. Right. That's our example. Yeah. We're not. So instead, when we look at that and say that, of course, the dynamics that exist, even for creating a proper family, we're not there right now. Right. Because everybody wants to take the place of what the family joy and fulfillment and the building of a family has now been replaced by money and right. status mm -hmm. and, and, and different class systems yeah. that people get to uh, uh, um, ambitiously work to get into. Right. So our women have masculated themselves. The men have been becoming effeminate. Yeah. They no longer have the same will and ambition. Mm -hmm. You can really tell something about the culture of a man by his ability to take his thoughts and produce them in reality. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Like yeah. the warrior class of our society are all fighting right. each other. They're not fighting for the people. Right. Right. That's different when you had the Black Panthers. Yeah. But when you got gangs that murder after each other, which was the de-evolution of the Black Panthers, you understand me? You look at this, this, this new society and saying that are we evolving or are we devolving? Mm -hmm. Then you have the scholars and the intellects of our society, right? 
which I would consider you, even though you're a warrior, you're a soldier, mm -hmm. I still consider you one of the scholars in society mm -hmm. because you educate and you teach. But bro, if you look back at Emotep, like Emotep was such a great man. They deified him, they made him into a god. He was a human, right? Mm -hmm. He was the, re the real father of medicine. You Absolutely. Um, these people were not just smart, they were physically capable as mm -hmm. well. Renaissance men, real, that Renaissance term, I gotta do some knowledge, research on that, but that come from way before the European Renaissance uh, era, you know what I'm saying? So, but that's what I'm, I'm, I'm tapped into, bro. Like, I, I wanna be, it's like I teach my son, like, yo, you wanna, you wanna be a well-rounded, you're gonna be a, a gentleman, mm -hmm. you're gonna have hands, mm -hmm. you're gonna know how to treat women. Like, I want him to go on dates and meet women, but you're not gonna be in a relationship no time soon. So get that out of your head, you know what I'm saying? But you wanna be a scholar, you wanna play a musical instrument, you know what I'm saying? All of these things, because, like, why, why be limited to, uh, I'm just really good at making money, or I'm just really good at lifting weights? No. You know what I'm saying? Actually, the those, if, one of the most dangerous places to be is to have that one skill mindset. Imbalance. That one pick right. crony. We live in a society, the people that are successful today are the people that got our renaissance people, right. men yeah. and women, that got roundabout skills. They right. can do multiple things. I got right. multiple talents that right. I can utilize. Right. Right. I'm a swift army knife whenever I want <laughs> right. to move something, yeah. I can pivot. Exactly. But I always built myself up like that on purpose to be mm -hmm. polymathic. Mm -hmm. So for my skill sets to span in many different areas right. because school at the uh, beginning of it was to be polymathic. You study all of these subjects, mm -hmm. right? But then I need you to go to school, pick one subject as a mastery, mm -hmm. and utilize that as your trajectory to make money. So it, it don't even set us up the right way. Nah, it because they tell us about being a jack of all trades, but they never gave us the option to be master of many skills and trades. Right, right, right. Because if somebody would have put that in, like, oh, so I don't have to be mediocre at multiple, I could be yeah. a master yeah. at multiple. Yeah. And they can connect. Yeah. And we live in a time where they connect now. Yeah. Creativity and business is now in connection. Because you can put, you can, you can create a, a NFT, right? Utilizing your creativity and the way you do your business, your business model and utilizing this technology is your creativity, but the way you get it done in the business side, the logic, that's your business mastery. Bro, you, At first these two couldn't combine, now they do. It, and it's so great, like you bring up the NFT space, I love it, and bro, it's like, you, you'll say certain things, and I'm like, me do, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's real. And it's like, like, like having multiple skill sets. So I, show, I sent this uh, little, it's a gift, it's about six seconds, so it's a little longer than the gift to my agent in the NFT world, right? And he was like, bro, I knew what he, his reaction was gonna be. This is something that I made, had made back in 2013 or 14 for promo for my training programs, right? All of my programs were designed, like I'm a huge fan of art and digital art specifically, right? So. All my training programs would be designed like, one was like Conan, 300, just fly, dope, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Before NFTs. So I said, what do you think about that? He's like, man, this is brilliant. This can be an NFT and we can attach the programs to it as a utility. He said, who did so-and-so do this? I said, bro, I had that made years ago. Yeah. He was blown away. I'm like already on that, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, so you're right, bro. Listen, life, listen, this world, is small in the cosmic sense, but big to us. Man, the things that we could learn, the things that's out there is, is so much. And I'm a student of life. I love learning, I love touching everything, feeling it out, you know what I'm saying? So I do want to explore everything I can explore, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's good to like, and this shit starts as when we're children, that, that inquisitive thinking that, you know, and that's something that I've never lost, that, that childlike wonder you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna try this. Let's right, do right, this. right. You know what I'm saying? Got it. We gotta be rooted in something practical and make sure we can handle our businesses on a third. But when we can pivot and do something creative and have fun with it, and you know what I'm saying? That's true human nature. That's human nature, bro. Like, I'll be honest with you. Like business and stuff. Like, it can be dry, cubicle, no spiritual activity mm -hmm. with it right. at all. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't expand you as a human being. Right. You understand me? But the creative side, when a human being gets to express their spirit, when they get to express their consciousness and who they are, mm -hmm. I think that's when a person evolves. That's when yes. their they spirit expands, yes. gets yes. heavier. Yes. So once yes. you go in and however you process life or what you believe what happens next, you have more value added to self. Right. You understand me? Like, 
learning the textbook thing and then doing that, putting together a system, mm -hmm. making you some money, that doesn't require a human feat of right. greatness, right. of excellence, right. of ingenuity and inventiveness, right. but like creating something from your mind, the way you do things can be, right? right? Like even athletes, they get to experience life where they get to utilize the human get, physicality get, get to be that great. Flow state. That's to me, the physical spirituality of athletics. Mm -hmm. You understand yeah, me? I agree. It involves breathing, prana, energy, control of your spirit, your yeah, body, your chi. Yeah. Like that capability of putting mind over matter. And that that that's such powerful. A, that's such a high level of brilliance, right? And it's funny that a lot of a lot of scholars, a lot of people in academia, they try to leave that out of the, the yeah. equation because that's something that they're devoid of. Right. They shouldn't do that. Don't be like. You know how much better you look when you recognize other, right. other areas of expertise right. that you don't have. And it's you different exalted. types of intelligence. It is. Like somebody, a, 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 a rocket engineer, a scientist can be great at that, but he might not understand how to upload a video on social media no, so he can go viral. Listen, I did some. Two I, different geniuses. I wrote a paper on, I, put, I got it on my, my website. I sent it to you, nine types of intelligence. Right? Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. tired of seeing these motherfuckers talk about put all this weight on IQ. Uh -huh. I'm like, nigga, we don't even take IQ tests. Like, yeah. What are you talking about? So anyway. Them intelligence query tests, them shits right. is, is biased anyway. So, and I took one, and I'm like, bro, this is, I took it, I scored, like I took my time in the beginning. It's, it's, it's a, it's a uh, proxy and it's time. So I wanted to make sure I killed it, right? So I'm like, all right, I'm trying to like really do the math on this. And I figured it out. So I scored at the highest you could score for the, average right but if i did it again i would be up in the high you know what i'm saying it's just that i took my time because i never never even studied the iq test but but it's not me taking that test it showed i know that it's not a measure of intelligence right this is a test taking tactic well you know an athlete may get a terrible number at that but their spatial intelligence is high yeah they, right? they they have kinesthetic intelligence and that's that's oh necessary for survival if it got to that yeah Okay, I'll protect you, smart guy. Come on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But but anyway, I, I looked up who was the most who had the highest IQ, and there's some dude who's a loser. So what good is that? <laughs> He's doing nothing with his life. What good is it? You know what I'm saying? And some of the people Shout out to whoever that dude was. <laughs> some of the people that you would think have the highest <laughs> IQ, like people who's very brilliant in academia, whatever, people that I'm I'm in awe of. Didn't have the highest IQ. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Creative exactly. intelligence is really one of the greatest levels to me. Right. You understand I, I, me? I, see, I respect it all. Yeah. I respect it all and appreciate it all. Because I think creative intelligence can be maximized on all fields. Right. Because it's, it's the way you go about it. Creativity yeah. is something you do. It's yeah. a skill that you can develop. Yeah. Like people think, oh, that person was born creative. No, it's something that you develop. You can do creativity like you train your body. You can train your mind. Creative people, creativity is, is bravery. You, you, you're brave enough to step out and do something weird. Yeah, the people... originality is the uncommon response. Right. Right, so yeah. like the common response, ain't no originality in yeah. that. The yeah, technical it's, it's thinker, right. doing as is. Creative right. thinker, abstract. Right, right. Feeling, emotions, all of that in, combined into it. So me working on this new NFT drop, right? So I'm like, all right, this is gonna be a big project. So I'm pulling people in, right? And one of my boys, he, he is a coder. He's an engineer for Meta, for Facebook but he's about to go do his own thing, but he's gonna come on board with me because he writes algorithms, right? Mm -hmm. So what he does is very technical math type shit, whatever. But as I'm telling him the story of the gods, eyes light up like, yeah. man, I wanna be a part of that. So the same with my, the artist that I'm using, right? This dude's wildly intelligent, but he just do regular shit, you know yeah. what I mean? Because that's how he makes money. So here it is now, we live in a world and a space to where this is human evolution at its finest. Remember I said earlier what separated us from other human species and allowed us to thrive was us having the ability to come up with abstract concepts and agree that it means certain things, right? That's what the NFT is. We all agree. We're assigning value to this art. You know what I'm saying? It's not a nat it doesn't grow out the ground. Like, it's not a tree. It's, not a, it's a thing that we just create. And we all say, you know what? This is worth 0.3 ETH. Let's start the floor mm -hmm. at that. And everybody's like, yeah, it's 0.3 yeah. ETH. You know what I'm saying? I love that. So it's like, this is human evolution at its finest, where we at right now. Now we're in a space to where creativity can reign supreme. And here's the thing, like, we can assign utility to it, of course. We all hear the stories, but 
I feel like the wave is going to be assigning things to it that is beneficial to people in a, in a meaningful way. Key. In physical, a meaningful way. The, the physical, especially for our people, like, I like me, I, I metaphysical and then physical, right? And, you know, the word meta, you know, meaning beyond, or some people call it death in Hebrew, but the beyond aspect, beyond the physical realm is important because we live in a very materialistic society mm -hmm. where I believe that we over implicate value on things because they are material, right? right? And, and we become materialist, right? Mm -hmm. Our cars, our clothes, our shoes, the purses, the every, all of these things are material. Mm -hmm. So we establish value on something because it has physical mass. right? But the most valuable things are immaterial, right. spirit, knowledge, you right. understand me, the soul. These are immaterial, valuable things that right. we can't live without, right. right? So for me, it's not about, and of course, the non-fungible token and this technology of smart contracts is not purely based on, uh, you know, just an immaterial connection because at the end of the day, it's a, a software, it's a technology that you can utilize. Right right to change business models to change standards and in industries mm -hmm. and to make whatever you're trying to do more effective right, right? and create more efficient ways to get things right. done right right so same thing how internet changed media right so for me it's about looking at it from the larger picture and when it's metaphysical you can go in your imagination and create whatever you will you can right. design whatever you want to right. it's now possible to do it because this blockchain technology has created a platform where the creators just need to design more right. i was talking with my guy from africa sitting down with him he showed me a brilliant app that he got coming out i mean right. amazing better than anything i seen. right and i'm explaining to him my ideas he's like oh man i'm blown away he like but keys i need you to write them down he said, whatever you write down, we will do, right. right? He won't be able to take the message and explain it and all of that way I do. Right. But my bro, Idris, I had this conversation with him. He said, Keys, you are already a designer. You're already mm -hmm. a developer because all you, you have the creative agency. Right. You understand me? You're a visionary. Mm -hmm. So like you have to just have the ability to, to design the concepts, mm -hmm. right? And then instruct whether it's the machine or the person to get it done. Right. So we've entered into a new stage where being a designer is being the most creative, but having the ability to actually write out your designs and right. instruct them in project management yeah. is key. It's important. Those are some of the most valuable new skill sets in mm -hmm. society that people are not establishing under their belt. Mm -hmm. You understand yeah. me? And yeah. as black men, we have yeah. to do that as any man, yeah. They have to do that if they want power in their culture, right. whether you're the red man right. or brown right. man right. 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 or yellow. Creativity is key. It is, man. And it makes life so much more fun. Oh, yeah. You know, it ain't boring, you know. Why does life have to be boring? You know what I mean? Bro, most That's... of these systems we got lame as hell. Yeah. Like, look at the building. You walk down the street, you wouldn't design the world the way it looks. It's right. not colorful. No, no. It's these straight yeah. lines. Yeah. It's a square. Yeah. 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 We're designing this crap. Right. That's why I appreciate Kanye so much. Yeah. I appreciate that, brother. You know what I'm saying? I went to his show when he did the one with Drake. I was like, Yeah, I was there too. I was like, Okay. Yeah. I see you. I see you. Yeah, he, because he's a, he's a rebel. You understand me? And he has the type of courage to where he don't mind being a disruptor because his mind don't think inside the lines. Right. You understand right. me? He recently um, credit had a, 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 a post was talking about NFTs. And he said, I'm focused on real things and real products, real food, real whatever, whatever, whatever. He said, at the moment, basically said, don't ask me about NFTs right now, right? That right. was his end of it. Uh, Cause I'm sure around surrounding him, people trying to get him in the board at Yacht Club yeah, and sure. all these other little clubs and do he's all like, of this stuff. He's like, no thanks. I and, feel him. Cause I wouldn't want to do what everybody else is doing anyway. Nah. Now, don't get me wrong. I talked about this in my last episode that there was, I think 2014, there was a coin Right, it was a cornye, right? Um, and it was made by these developers. They were making a coin after Kanye's likeness. Mm -hmm. But they did it in tangent with the joke connected to South Park. So when Kanye heard about it, he had his lawyer shut it down. Mm -hmm. The thing about that moment in time though, if instead he would have collaborated with them people, mm -hmm. he would have had one of the top three coins right now. Mm -hmm. Because all of them coins that was out, I think it was like the fourth coin that was out mm -hmm. at that time, all of them are billion dollar coins, mm -hmm. billion dollar market caps. Mm -hmm. So I seen a lot of people saying, well, I'm with Ye on this. I said, no, you're not, he a billionaire. 
Yeah, it's different. Yeah. yeah. No, you you're not yeah, with Ye right, on this. Right. You should be with the I want to utilize See, whatever technology that's the problem to with, build out my physical assets. That's the problem with people just blindly following. Like, listen, I am a huge fan of Kanye West. Yeah. His music. Love it. And that's it. Yeah. I'm not getting into his personal life and his yeah. political view. I, I don't care. I'm not, I, he wasn't introduced to me as a political pundit. Right. I don't care about that. I don't care what, he's free to think whatever he want to think and vote whatever. I don't care. People can't separate like they like somebody, attach themselves to somebody. So everything that person is on, they got to be on. Like, well, nah. see, people don't understand that all that other stuff is frenzy to create energy and attention right. around right. his ability to garner that attention mm -hmm. and produce mass profits. Right. A exactly. woman told me, she said, well, Keys, he didn't make, I said, he, I, when I made that comment, I said, you ain't with you, he got a billion. He said, well, he didn't get his billions off NFTs and digital land. But I said, wait a minute. He got his money off streaming music, which is mm -hmm. digital product, right? right? And uh, 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 shoes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and now he has the ability to go buy any physical asset that he wants right. to on the planet. Right. So you can't tell me that you're not going to utilize your creative agency and ability to use technology to go buy physical assets, right? right? Because you're saying that, oh, you want to focus on the real world. When the real world is meta and physical, it's right. metaphysical, we all connect it. Yeah. You can't see the spirit, can't Listen. see the mind, but it operates here's, here's everything in our we, consciousness. We don't know if our consciousness continues when this shell cracks, right. but we know the shell will crack. Yeah. So, that, you know, people just don't think. They don't really have any foresight, insight to think about these things. Yeah. Like this, everything is real. The NFT is real. Just like a thought is real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, people got to really stop being so limited in thought and stop being so quick to speak, too. You know what I'm saying? Fall back and think about it for a minute. You know what I'm saying? See, and, and here's the thing. I, I, I think it's the language. I, when, every time there's a new language, there's always going to be a feeling towards it. The NFT mm. word, I'm just tired of hearing it. Mm. Just because it's like, it doesn't describe what it actually is. Right. And people think of it as this singular product, as right. one dimensional. Right. And it's kind of like saying the, NF, the internet is real or the internet is this. Yeah. It's a technology. Yeah. So okay. at the end of the day, man, when it comes to this technology, I want us to use it towards our thesis, Connecting real value, absolute, 100%, because I believe in intrinsic value. Right. Value that can never go down to zero because right. it holds a real value. Right. right. And I believe with us, we should always make the connection of creating real valuable products. You're always using this technology for nation building. Anything right. we get into mm -hmm. should be for the purpose of nation building. Right. Individual success is great, mm -hmm. right, for that person, mm -hmm. but it doesn't affect other families right. and they last names. Right, that's true. So when it comes to vision, vision is inclusive. Mm -hmm. If I do something based on my vision, that's gonna benefit multiple families. My life benefits millions, right? right? And will benefit millions of more because that's the way I'm going to live. Right. I view from, I have a world view in everything right. that I do. Right. So when it comes to whether it's crypto, whether it's blockchain technology, whether you get into stocks, whatever it may be, the vision should be connected to the collective. Mm -hmm. But first starting with self, spreading that out into family, right. last name, right? And then connecting that into culture and collective, right? Right. And I think that that's how we go far. Digital strategies for physical assets. That's real, man. Yeah. I love it all, bro. I'm with it all. And, yeah. you know, and hopefully the people that follow me and connect with me, they see, right? And listen, and I'm, I got to tell you, bro, like, like my first... NFT launch with like I went on a date and fell in love. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so on this now. Like um, a lot of things. Listen, I've been in my space for years, so things are on autopilot for the most part for me. My companies don't rely on my image anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's an excellent thing, right? So I'm putting a lot of it. Right now, it's about 70% of my time business-wise is on my NFT stuff. You know what I'm mm. saying? I love it, bro. It's yeah. like I get to be a kid again. Yeah. Yeah. And make money doing it. Cause you know what I'm saying? I mean that creativity, man. I mean, you know, you create content that was still mm -hmm. creative, but it was still so much work that it's not the same. Right. But this space, I've been doing art f my whole life. I, right. My first business was painting on shirts. Right. Right. You understand right. me? So now I get to fully express that right, right. and command with my new business with right. and my resources. Yeah. And get to plug that out there. I want to ask you something though before we get out of here. Yes, sir. So, I want to 
go to a physical place, mm. do maybe like a weekend thing or a day thing, do like a training for like 100 men mm -hmm. or 50 men, 50 women, however right, right. we do it. But I want to connect it to an NFT, right? Mm. And I want you to train them with me. I'm you understand down, me? I'm with Today it. Today we train them. We doing I'm military train drills, I'm workouts. I'm with it. Let's talk about the NFT stuff too. Let's, yeah. let's put let's put a plan, a plan together. Yeah. And write it out and let's execute it. I think that'd be can. fire. That'd be dope. Bro. Yeah. Different. Hell yeah. Yeah. I'm with it. Man, I appreciate it, man. Listen, man, this has been a high level conversation. I'm here. Listen, we didn't even get to dive into Mike Rashid and his story and everything that he's been through and how he's built up his health supplement, gym, empire, from his stories from going to jail, you understand me, being on the run, getting out, being one of the top health uh, fitness, right, gurus, experts, athletes, I don't yeah. know what you call it, <laughs> being a boxer from an early age, right, until now, the man has a documentary out. So I didn't want to spend all the time talking about that. I wanted to really dive into having a real conversation in the cipher build, but I want you all to go to Mike Rashid page and study him. You understand me? The reason I chose him to have, because like I said earlier at the beginning, when we talk about manhood is a dying art, right? And masculinity is an art, right? Being understanding the temperance that a man needs to have, the training a man needs to go through, right? The uh, 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 um, ability to produce his will into reality and to right. manifest his reality, the ambitions that he needs to have, mm -hmm. the controlling of his mood, um, the, the, the culture of honor and respect right. and integrity, like all of these different things that go into being a man, the protecting and providing and the connection that you have with women and the right. masculine and feminine principles, finding people that represent that is rare. Right. You understand me? And I think that you carry it very well within mm -hmm. yourself, mm -hmm. right? And I wanted to open up that conversation because there may be people that follow you. Oh, he got, he got the car, he got the clothes, he got the women. So they want that. Mm -hmm. But there's responsibility that comes along with right, that. Right. And being able to connect with people that we are similar, but we are different at the right, same time. And right. that's the beauty of it. Right. You understand me? Because that's what the cypher is all about. Right. Real, real Men quick, coming together. Real quick, I want to say this too. Like the cars, the house. Oh, listen, I got, when I bought my house, uh -huh. I made sure it was big enough to move my daughter and her mother in my house mm. so I can have all my family. Like, me, everything that I do is for the people I love. My car, yeah, I want my, my family to be comfortable and be proud to be yeah. something nice. You know what I'm saying? Like, so my thing is I don't live for myself. I live for the people that I love, right? So, fellas, I qualify myself to be a good dad, good friend, good business partner, good husband, good whatever right and i get these things and now all of the extra shit is for them i don't need nothing yeah bro like a few years ago i remember i had a, a house in chandler arizona with just bean bags no couch no curtains yeah it took for me to get a girlfriend be like bro you ain't got no curtains <laughs> i like oh I, I i got a tv and the, i'm cool you know what i'm saying yeah but i'm just not you know I, i'm 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 sturdy i don't need a whole lot right but for my loved ones yeah i want to provide i want to have I want them to be comfortable. You know what I'm saying? So when it, when y'all see all the fly stuff, I like, you know, jewelry, whatever. I like all of that shit, right? This is my my heritage. You know what I'm saying? This is how we we used to be in our in our day of glory, right? And we entering back into that. So we should be adorned with precious metals and things of that nature. Right. Valuable things that appreciating assets. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? Appreciating <laughs> assets. You know what I'm saying? So um but yeah, so we want y'all to see that, like, listen, we just like y'all. Probably had shittier situations than y'all. So no excuses. You know what I'm saying? Young man, y'all need to get, get y'all shit together. Leave your girls alone. Focus on building yourself up. Become design, engineer, architect who you want to be and how you want your life to be. Because you absolutely can. And then live the rest of your life like a king, straight up. Now, I'm going to ask you this last thing. Well, I'm going to throw this at you, really. Okay. Right? And so this is about evolution. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'll beat your ass, Mike Rasheed. Okay. Oh, Why? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> now, listen. Me? Here's the thing. When you're 19 years old, mm -hmm. how do you react to somebody walking up to you and saying that? Versus... Bro. Versus at 44 years old, yeah. 
And what's the difference in your evolved temperament and how you deal with that? Why? Oh, I probably would have like shut it off back then. You gotta think, bro. I have a, I have a, I talk about this all the time. Like, I don't think people should be allowed to be police officers until like 33, mm. 34. Barrel chest, life experiences, you know what I'm saying? Because when you're young, you hot. You are unrefined power. You know what I'm saying? So you're dangerous. Yeah. So yeah, so you're young, you're stupid. Especially, I was reading, you know, I have a teenager, teenage son now. So I'm reading about teenagers and driving and like the, the times when they get into accidents or get tickets and do stupid shit is when their friends are in the car. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's a whole thing of them trying to impress the homies and shit like that. So, you know, when I was young, I was not smart, bro. I was a, a fucking baby. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's a lot, a lot different. Right. Now, I don't, I don't, I used to like fighting. Yeah. Or, no, no, no. I never liked fighting, but I, I, I knew I could fight, so I like showing people. Like you like winning. Yeah, but I don't want to ever fight. I don't want no kind of physical conflict. I'll, I'll get dirty if I have to, but I don't want to. You know what I'm saying? Right, because I heard Mike Tyson once talk about how, well, he said he practiced it because he know he's crazy, right? right? So he had to practice it because he know people would do things to trigger him. Right. You understand me? Yeah. So he don't want people to have that ability to control his emotions right. where he just flash out on that violent yeah. point. You understand me? And I think that that's important because not a lot of men go through that point where they actually learn how to control that aspect. Yeah. Everybody else still has control over them because that's still immature. Right. You understand me within themselves. Yeah, for sure. And I really wanted to have that sound bite. You understand me? <laughs> you got it. You <laughs> and what I do it. to Mike Tyson interview, <laughs> I want to be sit sitting there serious the whole time and just, I'll beat your ass, Mike Tyson. <laughs> No, I'm just he, might with give you. You, he might give you a look, though. You he might give you like, <laughs> I'm just <laughs> playing, brother. Hey, he's man. different, bro. He's different, yeah, no. bro. It, it can't be why he, he about to fight somebody. You nah, know what I'm nah, saying? He prepared nah. for a fight. He might be an nah, animal. Let him mode. be high before he come in. You yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's going sure. after we done kicked it and had yeah, a whole conversation okay. where right. he be like. When you doing that? I don't know. Oh, okay, okay. Got to set it up. Got to set it up. Right That'd be dope. Yeah. I love that dude to death. Yeah. I mean, you know. Just on that point, I think well, I, I get why a lot of people give him deference, but at the same time, it's like. Well, people respect violence, bro. Yeah, we respect violence. You, you know? understand me? And, and we respect <clears throat> capable people. Like and that. we respect a certain type of masculinity that no longer exists <laughs> and, and, in the form that it was able to be public, right? And so it's like Mike Tyson represented an era. Right, yeah. he was a different form of masculinity than yeah. Muhammad Ali. Yeah, Muhammad Ali fought for you know rights of people, mm -hmm. right, and his yeah. his freedoms of religion, yeah. right, and his ability to change his own name and be his own right. man and, and and talk his talk. Right, right, he, he had a completely different type of fight. You understand me? But Mike Tyson had that type of energy where it's like, it's not about whether you accept me. It's about whether you like what I do or none of that. He's saying that. I'm capable of holding my own, mm -hmm. of doing whatever I want to do. And at any point in time, you understand me, I can prove that yeah. or be willing to die for that. Just a ferocious spirit. Yeah. And at the, at the energy of all men, they want that energy to be able to walk around and have their will be dominant in society. Yeah. So he represented like a raw version of hyper masculinity. Yeah. Mike Tyson, if you want to Without trying. look at a definition of machismo and hyper masculinity, Mike Tyson should be right there in the dictionary. I love it, bro. I love it. I love that. <laughs> and then Muhammad Ali should just be right there at masculinity. You understand yeah, yeah. me? <laughs> Muhammad Ali was a man, bro. Yes. You know who also was a man was George Foreman. Yeah. George Foreman was a man, bro. Like, I watched, like, you watch his career, and when he fought, when he won the heavyweight championship at 45, 46, he was getting his ass beat every round by Michael Moore. Mm -hmm. Every round. But he did not quit. Yeah. That last round, he set that trap, knocked that man out, one shot. Yeah. I'm like, that's a fucking man yeah. right there. You and for the record, I don't want to fight Mike Rashid. You know <laughs> I seen the brother. I wouldn't highlights. fight him anyway. I seen the brother highlights. He's nah. <laughs> listen. Listen, he, I don't two two twenty. That brother moved like Floyd Mayweather. Let me tell you something. I do not have the capacity to fight or or get yeah. physical with anybody that I love. That I, I actually about. don't either. And I learned I this recently. Like, damn, because you know you got a point in your head where you yeah. can just cut it off and go full animal. Yeah. But it's like with people There's I love, people I don't, I don't, have I don't even have. I don't have that. You all. understand me? They this shit just. Yeah, I, I, like one of my friends, I'm like, we got into it one time and I was mad, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was some weird shit that happened with some finances. And 
he was like nervous. I like, bro, you could spit in my face. I wouldn't do anything to you. So don't ever think that I would even, you know what I'm saying? Nah, nah, nah. Cause I seen this pastor spitting his, in his hands, put it on this man's face. Man, I'm gonna tell you, bro. I, I try to do whatever listen, I can to you after that. I know that nobody would do that, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? but I just, I, I can't fathom ever yeah. trying to hurt somebody yeah. that I really fuck with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't so, want to cause harm to you. Like, that's not that, when you got that kind of love for people, it can't go that far. I can't. I don't have that. You know but anyway, that? man, we're we gonna turn into a whole nother podcast. It's been yeah. a high level conversation, yeah. man. We tapped in, we went on everything from polygamy to masculinity, from technology to culture, philosophy. We done went into all of the isms and everything that you need to tap in. So listen to this high level conversation, suggestions for somebody else because it's not enough men talking like men. You understand me? On a 19 Keys show, listen, I'm not afraid of anybody out there. I fear no one but a lot. So at the end of the day, we go speak truth, we go politic and we go build so that the culture has an example of what to do next. So right. 19 Keys, it's my good brother Mike Rashid. Tap in for another episode. Ah, right, shit, my brother. Thank you. Yes, sir. 19 Keys, high level conversation. Tap in with the guy. A man do not deserve a woman if a man did not have the means to take care of her. And I'm not just talking about financially, but yes, financially as well mentally spiritually physically make her feel safe a man you know it's a reason why men date younger women because women mature faster than us it takes us a while to develop the attributes that we need to be a, a leader right so we gotta you know we gotta go through our heroic journeys we gotta educate ourselves we gotta you know it's a lot of things a lot of qualities that we have to uh, acquire before we're in position to be able to to lead and guide a queen we gotta qualify ourselves to be kings, so that's why some dudes don't deserve it. Work, work, work for it, you know what I'm saying? You'll get there one day, young man. So I brought Mike Rashid on because, number one, Mike Rashid is somebody who's very successful as a man. Somebody who's proven himself through the uh, grounds of business and life. You understand me? He take care of his family. He take care of his business. He has uh, products that he sells successfully as a millionaire, has his own factory and distribution channel. Uh, take care of everybody in his life. You understand me? And I think that not only that, he understands knowledge itself. You understand me? He has the mathematics. Uh, and I think that that's key when it comes to bringing people in to have ciphers. And he also lives a lifestyle different than myself. He is a person that practices a polygamous lifestyle with multiple women, right? And um, I, I think it's important to have different opinions, but at the same time, people that you respect, right? So as a dangerous black man, somebody who's accomplished success in this world, who's not afraid to speak truth, right? Um, who's found ways to activate his creativity, you understand me, within the ciphers to create millions of dollars for himself, who's not afraid to jump into uh, new engineer uh, or industries rather and pioneer. Those are the type of black men I want to surround myself by because they're doing some things that I have not done yet. You understand me? And anytime that we can create a cipher and we can communicate and we can build, that creates the opportunity for understanding. But more than that, it also creates the opportunity to serve as examples for those who want to achieve the same type of levels of success. You understand me? When it comes to the physicality, a, a person has to go to the mental alchemy of everyday training and be consistent, whether they go into the club at night and they waking up six in the morning because they have dedicated themselves to a goal for the rest of their life. Some people only know how to dedicate themselves to a holiday, right? To, to, to a goal of having sex with, uh, uh, with multiple women or some other different things. It's different when a man decides that his purpose will always be his greatest responsibility, right? So. I interviewed Mike Rashid for high level conversations because I knew we can go into multiple dimensions and we can talk about manhood without being uh, um, encumbered with the new type of masculinity that's being prevailed around society, which is beta masculinity, soy boy activity, right? And I know masculinity, or I know Mike Rashid don't have none of that stuff going on. So we had a high level conversation and we talked about everything uh no stone was left unturned it was the longest podcast that i've shot thus far so we're gonna chop it up in different segments but it's gonna be a lot of nuggets for you all to be able to pull from please watch it with your fathers your uncles your sisters your brothers that guy that you you you, you like right now sit his ass down and watch that podcast with him you understand me he's squirming a little bit he got something to say he don't want to finish the rest of it 
what happens is when you take this medicine called manhood, you understand me, it's gonna bring out all of the sucker. So if you got it in you, one of the side effects is he start moving and complaining. He start talking about he got other things to do. He ain't got nothing else to do. Sit your ass down and watch 19 Keys and Mike Rashid have a high level conversation. You understand me? And to the degree of how much he disagrees, you can tell how much of that black guy he didn't tapped into. So ladies, fellas too, this has been a high level conversation. And the next time we have an episode, make sure you tap in. Peace. I'm 19 Keys. High level conversation. Tap in with the guys.